themselves. Go ahead. With man come. Which goes into the side of my spirit also. The Lord said, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be put to death and destroyed in that day. Give me 2nd Edges 15, 26. Continue where you at in Romans. Right, continue where you was at in Romans. You give me 2nd Edges 15 and 26. All right. Oh, yeah, we're going to bring it out, man. Whether you like it, understand it, accept it, believe it or not. The Lord said, teach the word whether they hear or forbid. Whether they scoff, they get mad, they antagonize you, they threaten the We don't give a damn. The Lord said, give your life, and I'll give you a crop. Get, get faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crop. Romans 1, uh, 27, left off that. All right, man. Go back there. We going. Verse 27. And likewise, also the men. Likewise, also the men. Go ahead. Leaving the natural use of the woman. That's what they do. They leave the natural use of the woman. Go ahead. Burned in their lust. Burned in their lust. Come on. Once toward another. Seem like your ancient Roman Caesars, man. Caligula and them perverted guys. They was with men with men, working that which is unseemly. That was part of the natural order of their empire. And that's why the Lord destroyed the hell out of the Romans. And he's going to destroy the hell out of the modern day Romans, America. America's modern day Rome, and the Lord going to burn your ass up with nuclear fire also. Right, come on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. Which was me. The Lord said, it serves you right what happened to you. The judgment that comes upon you, it serves you right. Come on. And even as they did not like to retain the most high in their knowledge. They like to retain the Lord in their knowledge. Go ahead. The most high gave them over to a reprobate mind. The Lord said he gave them over to a castaway. You are damn castaway. You're not, you're not fit for the Lord's kingdom. This is what the Lord is saying. He gave you over to a reprobate mind. He made you a castaway. You are not fit for the Lord's kingdom. Right, come on. To do those things which are not convenient. The Lord said to do those things which are not convenient. Because it's not good for a man to be with another man. It's not good, it's not right for a woman to be with another woman. So he said to do those things which are not convenient. All right? Why? Because it's out of order. It's not in tune with nature how the most high made the man and the woman dynamic. It's not in tune. So they said, you do those things that are not convenient. Come on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. What Lord said? Being filled with all unrighteousness. Lord said, you fill with all unrighteousness. So what is unrighteousness sin? Read 2 Edges 15, 26. Read. It's the book of 2 Edges chapter 15 and verse 26. For the Lord knows all them that sin against him. The Lord said he know all them that sin against them. Go ahead. And therefore delivered he them unto death and destruction. Therefore he delivered them to death and destruction. So the scriptures say you are filled with all unrighteousness when you engage in those lifestyles. And because you're filled with all unrighteousness, the Lord said he's going to deliver you to death and destruction. That's your judgment. That's your final end. All we can do is tell you. But all we can do is warn you. Right? And when we warn you, you better take heed. But a lot of you, you don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Give me Zechariah 7 and 11. You don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Right? Yeah, drop Romans. Yeah. You don't want to hear the word of the Lord. You want to hear smooth things. You want to hear pop, you want to pop aside the seats. You want to go to Resurrection Sunday Church tomorrow. And hear all kinds of lies from the preacher and the pastor that Christ resurrected in three days and three nights. But there's only two days and two nights that you're counting. But go ahead with the lies. You want to hear the lies? Go ahead with the lies. Read what you got, King. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, and verse 11. But they refused to hearken and pull away the shoulder. And stop their ear. The Lord said. And stop their ear. Did he get from the top? This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 11. But they refuse to hearken. They refuse to hearken. They don't want to listen. They're hard headed. They're stubborn. They're rebellious. Good. And pulled away the shoulder. They did what? And pulled away the shoulder. And they pulled away their shoulder. We don't want to hear that. Right? We don't want to hear. We want to hear what the pastor got to say. We want smooth things. We want you to pop beside the seats. Come on. And stop their ear. And do what? And stop their ear. And stop their ear. We don't want to hear that. We want to go to church tomorrow and hear the pastor whisper sweet nothings in our ear and lie like hell. Or, or get $75 in a collection plate and get mad. Yo, we had 300 last week. We're down to 75. What's going on? Right, well, yeah, the pastor. Your money getting low, pastor, huh? Your money getting kind of low, you know why? Because a lot of our people are leaving them churches and waking up to this truth. Come! So the collection plates are getting low. 
right? The pastor said, we got to pass it around again. Right? The pastor said, this is an abomination. What the hell is going on here? Right? We joined in the 25 hour shop this week. Right? Because you're a greedy dog, like the scriptures tell you in Isaiah, man. You're a greedy damn dog. Read what you got, King. They should not hear. That they should not hear. Verse 12. Okay. They made their hearts. As an, as an adamant stone. Lord, so they made their heart as an adamant stone. Meaning what? You're firm in your rebellion against the Most High. That's what it's talking about when it says an adamant stone. All right? You firm in your rebellion. You don't want to hear what the Lord got to say. You don't want to hear what this Bible got to say. But let us be out here. Let, let us be out here talking about who's going to be at the club. Let us be out here talking about the hell. We in Atlanta, the strip club. Right, let us be out here talking about some folly twerking or something. Everybody want that. Everybody want to be involved with that. Everybody want to hear about that. Right, come on. At least they should hear the law and the words which Jehovah of hosts have sent in the spirit by former prophets. Right, see, at least you would hear the law. Because what? If you hear the law, you got to correct yourself. That's the problem with our people. Say, no, 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 get that Bible. I don't, I don't want to hear that. That Bible is a white man's book. Because you know why? If you get into it, you got to get in order. You got to correct yourself. But right? there's standards in this Bible. There's dignity in this Bible. There's morals in this Bible. There's instructions in this Bible. And our people, like I can tell you in Jeremiah, you a wild ass that don't want no discipline. So therefore, you cast the Bible behind you. Or your Bible's collecting damn dust on your mantle. Right, or, or I, I know the Bible backwards and forwards. My grandma taught me about the Bible, but you wicked as hell. So you refuse to hearken. So guess what? You're going to face the judgment. Come on. Therefore came a great wrath. And what? A great wrath. Therefore came a great wrath. Come on. From Yahweh of hosts. From the Yahweh of hosts. A great wrath came upon you. Because what? You refuse to hearken. So a lot of our people, you're going to face the judgment, man. That race war is going to jack you up. The concentration camps gonna jack you up. Whatever new strain of, of, of makeup, COVID, that they come out with next is gonna jack you up. Or they gonna kill you in a damn hospital and say the new strain killed you. All that's coming, man. Or they gonna come out with some other kind of other plague, some unknown plague, till I can tell you in Deuteronomy 28, some unknown plague gonna come out and kill you and turn you into a damn zombie. That's what's gonna happen in these last days. The Most High got a bunch of goodies by way of prophecy for America and this world. He got a bunch of goodies for you. Cause you've been wicked as hell and your time is up, Holmes. It's time to pay the piper. America, the so-called white man, we don't give a damn if Trump try to come back in office. We don't give a damn if Trump try to come back in office. Because guess what? Drop everything, give me Revelation 12, 16. We don't give a damn if Trump try to come back in office. Because Trump ain't gonna fix a damn thing. Right, like he's not gonna make America great again. Right. All right, he's going to make America destroyed again. Right. right. America, you're filthy, you're wicked and evil, and you're about to be destroyed. That's right. There's no hope for you. There's no hope for Babylon, man. There's no hope for Babylon. It's a wrap. Give it up. Throw in the towel. Right. It, it, it's circle in the dream. All that good stuff. There's no hope for you, Babylon. You're about to be destroyed. You're on your last leg of rulership. Chapter 12 and verse 16. Yeah. And the earth. Help the woman. Give me, uh, 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 Luke, Luke 21, 25. Great. In the earth, help the woman. You know what I'm saying? In the earth, help the woman. Uh, it's like your my bad, 16 and 12. Revelation 16 and 12. Oh, yeah, we're going to get it, man, because the prophecy is... You can bring the hell. I hope you do bring Donald Trump back in. That's an honest cracker, man. That's an honest devil. Let him run again and let him come back to office so we can get this thing popping, man. Get this third world's war popping. Let us really get that. You gonna vote for Trump if he went again? Uh, no? Who are you gonna vote for? No one? Well, why not? Not even Biden? No one, huh? Right? Why you don't vote? As much as I trust you. Right? None of you so-called white people can be trusted, man. You gotta no, no, don't try to be his friend. Don't try to be his friend. Don't try to slip in and be his friend. You know why we can't trust you? What did you What did you do to the Native American Indians? Right? No, you're not. Come on, man. That's an embarrassment. That's an embarrassment, man. That's a so. What tribe you from? Huh? Chippewa. Oh my God. Where's God at, man? Where is God at, man? Chippewa. Can you prove that? Can you prove that, sir? 
Can you prove that? Can you prove you from the, you're, you're a Native American Indian? Uh, you're Chippewa? Where's your father? Where's a picture of your father? Here's a true Native American Indian right here. Yeah, here's a true Native American Indian right here. No, 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 no. He can't, you know, he can't, he can't, he can't, hold up, he can't, hold on, he can't shake your hand. You know why? Because you're going to do him just like you did his forefathers. You're going to shake his hand, you're going to shake his hand, and then you're going to stab him in the stomach. Just like you did. How did you white people get America? Let's be honest. How did you so-called white people get America? How did you, how did you get it? How, wait a minute. How did you get America? Give me St. John. You're not, here's a true Native American Indian right here. Not you, man. Nowhere. Read what you got, come. Book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, the thief cometh not, go ahead. But for to steal, but for to steal, come on. And to kill, and to kill, come on. And to destroy. What did your forefathers do? Guys like Andrew Jackson. What did you do? Rape, rob, and murder, and stole the Native Americans' land, and now you gonna claim to be him? That's an abomination, man. Who? Who's that? Gideon is, we don't know who Gideon Israel is. And if, and if Gideon Israel loves you, then he's not down with us. Gideon Israel is what like Native American. Like he loved his woman. He loved his woman, man. Like, like he loved his woman, man. Fight out of India, fight out of India. Fight out of India with no change. Fight out of India with no change, right? No change at all, right? Good. Go ahead. I am come. Oh, left his. He got. He got his ass up out of the lion's den, man. He left his woman to be a damn field girl, man. He left his woman, man, to get snatched up and thrown out in the field. But right, that man got up out of the lion's den quick, boy. Read what you got, kid. I am come. My God, <laughs> that man just fled from his woman, man. That's not good, man. All these lions, we gonna throw her like. Oh my God, brother Rick. I am come that they might have life. I wish I said he come that the Israelites might have life, God. and that they might have it more abundantly. Lord said they might have it more abundantly. So the man claims to be a damn, a damn five, uh, uh, a five dollar Indian, all right, uh, a so-called Indian, or oh, is a uh, uh, stock? Yeah, there it is. All right, he's claimed he claimed to be a so-called Native American. He ain't even a damn five dollar Indian. He's a damn fifty cent Indian, man. He's a five cent Indian. All right, but showing you how Esau is, he want to cleave to everybody's nationality. He want to cleave to everybody's nationality. Give me her Daniel 2.43. Give me the uh, book of Daniel 2.43. You give me uh, uh, Luke 16.26. Esau, you cannot cleave and become us now, man. It's the last days. It's too late for you. You washed up, devil. It's too late. Right now, you want to try to sneak in there and slip in there and be a Native American Indian, man. You can't even get $5, out of, man. You are a five cent Indian. All right, five cents so-called, and we don't call them Indians, we call them the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel. They're so-called Native American Indians, but they're the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel. Read what you got, King. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with Mary clay, just like you saw iron mixed with Mary clay, come on, they shall wrangle themselves with the seed of men. Esau want to slither in there with everybody, man. That's why a lot of times they deal with the, our women because they figure Esau got a bugged out theory that if we continue to mix, we're all just going to become one human race one day. No, it's not going to happen, buddy boy. The book of Daniel is going to shut that down. Right, read, brother. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with Mary Clay going into the Roman Empire, right? Come on. They shall mingle themselves. Said Esau, the so-called white man, was going to try to mingle himself, God, with the seed of men. He's going to try to mingle himself with all nations. Come on. But they shall not cleave one to another. Esau, you're not going to become the other nations. You're not going to cleave one to the other nations, especially Israel. Come on. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Said just like you can't mix iron with clay, man. Stay with your own kind and repent and keep the commandments. You black and Latino men, teach your women how to dress properly, man. All right, stop displaying your women out here, right? So you cannot mix iron with miry clay. So Esau, you're not gonna have, uh, uh, impregnate our women as much as you can, like you said in your Willie Lynch theory, so somewhere you can become Israel all of a sudden. 
or we'll be one mixed human race and you think you can hide and blend in and the most High not going to judge you. Not going to work, buddy boy. Not going to work. The Lord said you're not going to mix with, with, with the iron with miry clay. You're not going to be able to cleave unto men. Read what you got, Karen. It's the book of Ruth, chapter 16 and verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you. The Lord said between us and you, the rich man in the nation of Israel, Esau and Israel. Go ahead. There is a great gulf fix. There's a great gulf fix. There's a great separation. Come on. So that so that they which were that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. The Lord said they that which pass from hence to you cannot. Come on. Neither can they pass to us that would come from this. The Lord said, neither can they pass to us that will come from you. Esau, you can't take our place, and we damn sure don't want to take your place. You can't do it, man. You can't do it. But right? you cannot take our place, and we damn sure don't want to take your place. So five dollar Indian, get the hell up out of here, man. Get out of here. Right? You're gonna be chased down and hunted down in these last days and put to death like the demons that you are. You're gonna pay for your crimes. Right, you're not getting away. You're not going to be able to blend in. Give me Micah 2 and 2 again. All right, Micah chapter 2, verse 2. What you hold it? Good. All right, you're not going to be able to come and be part of us, man. You're not going to come up here and say, I'm Native American. Am right, I looking pale as hell? Don't you know the, the, the so-called Native Americans, you tried to call them the pale skin when you so-called white people are the pale skin people. The Native Americans were different shades of brown. Just because some of them was a little light, they still had the melanin in their skin. They wasn't red as hell like you. You're going to turn around and try to uh, uh, call them the red people. you going to turn around and try to call them the red people when you red as hell from, from head to toe. All right, read what you got, Kate. This is the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 2. And they come in fields and take them by violence. You know what I'm and they come in fields and take them by violence. They come in fields and take them by violence. Go ahead. In houses. And take them away. And you covet houses and you take houses away. Go ahead. So they oppress a man in his house. Oppress a man in his house. Go ahead. Even a man in his heritage. Even a man in his heritage. What do you do? You rape, you rob, you murder, and you take everybody's identity and nationality. That's what you so-called white people do, man. That's what you do. Now you got the audacity to come up here after all the bloodshed and murder that you've done on the so-called Native American Indians and say you're a Native American, a so-called Native American Indian. That's an abomination and a lie. And the Lord gonna punish you for that. You mentioned earlier about how we gotta get, get rid of this LGBT spirit that's down here in Atlanta. And you said that men gotta be men again and women gotta be women again. If you look, they got a commercial right now, but if you look on this TV on the right, they're doing, they're doing an MMA promotion. And they got, and right now on MMA, they got two women in the cage fighting. So that goes to show you how far gone, because women are supposed to be gentle and dainty and feminine and classy. Two women are not supposed to be stripped down to their underwear and fighting in a cage. Good, right? All praises, right? Ain't nothing wrong with a woman learn, knowing how to fight and defend herself, but still keep your femininity, all right? Still keep, but not in the damn cage on an MMA fight. Read what you got, brother. It's the book of Micah chapter two and verse three. Therefore, it does save the Lord. Behold, against the family do I devise evil. That's it on that. Read what you got, Kate. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark. I said, remove not the late, ancient landmark. When you so-called white people came here, you stole this land from the Native American Indians. But you stole Israel from the from, from people over here, from all the tribes. So the Lord said, what, read it again? Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set, which our fathers have set. Our ancestors, the forefathers of the nation of Israel, set the boundaries of the land for us so the white people came along and removed it. So you're going to pay, man. You're going to pay. That's what we're here to tell you. You're going to pay for all your crimes. What you had in Second Ezra? All right. That's it on that? All right. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right. Yeah, you're going to pay for the crimes of your ancestors. Everything you've done, all the evil, the Lord is going to remember, man. The Lord is going to remember everything that you've done and you're not getting away with it. You're not getting away with it. Right? You know why? Because the Heavenly Father, the Most High Power of Israel, of Isaac and Jacob, he loves his nation. That's right. And he's going to defend us. Give me give me the book of uh, Luke 18 and 7. Give me the... 
Uh, give me the book of Luke 18 and 7. Yeah, cut, it's up there. All right, yeah, read that. Read. This is the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 7. And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect? Shall not the Most avenge his own elect? The Lord loves the nation of Israel. So you're not going to get away with doing what you do to him. You give me Zechariah 2 and 8. Read. Which cry day and night unto him. Which what? Which cry day and night unto him. We cry day and night unto the Father. We plead to the Most High to deliver us, to take us out of the hand of the enemy, to stop our enemies from mistreating us or doing us evil. And you think the Lord not going to hear us? Oh, he's going to hear us, right? Come on. Go he bear long with them. No, he what? Go he bear long with them. Well, the Lord bears Right, puts up with our with our evil. He puts up with our sin. All right, he bears long with us. Because he knows we've been wicked. But he's still going to avenge us, man. The Lord said, no, I got to tolerate all y'all madness. I'm going to still get the nations back for y'all because I love y'all. Right, me? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. I said he will avenge them speedily, meaning it's going to happen quicker than you think. All right, it's not going to take us such a long time for the Lord to redeem us and pay our enemies back. Come on. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. I said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, is he going to find faith? Because a lot of people, when your shot get here, you're going to have you're going to lose faith by that time. Because you're going to see, oh, the Lord, the layup is coming. There's still something going on in this world. There's still something to look forward to. So he said, when the Son of Man comes, is he going to find faith? A lot of you are going to be without faith when your house shot come. Right? He only going to save and deliver those that have faith. Read what you got, King. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 8. For thus saith the hour of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he had for he that toucheth you. He that toucheth the nation of Israel, go ahead. Toucheth the apple of his eye. He touched the apple of the Lord's eye, man. That's what the Lord said we are. So you touch us, the Lord gonna see you. The Lord said, even though I gotta put up, they hard-headed, they rebellious, they stubborn, they mischievous, but I'ma still avenge my people. Because I love them. Keep me what you got, kid. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter 2, verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? I said, woe unto you that have lost patience. A lot of you, man, you've gone back in the world, but you commit all manner of sin. You give up on this truth. You get bitter. You get bored. You go into other philosophies and doctrines. You get carried away, tossed to and fro like a child. So therefore, what? You miss out. You miss out on it. You miss out on your salvation. But right, you miss out on your salvation. That's what. Right. They got the sign up there talking about save the planet. God. All right, right. Don't save the planet, nuke the planet. Right, read what you got, King. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? So I said, what will you do when the Lord visits you? Woe unto you that have lost patience. A lot of our people, you give up patience, man. You know, there's that, that thing again, man. Right? And what the hell that is, man? Your brother's got to repent. Brother, sister, whatever that is. Y'all got to repent, man. Y'all got to repent and get it together. And it's not about mocking people, putting people on the spot. But that's an abomination, man. Come on. That's an abomination. Come on. Brother, sister, whatever you are. Get it together, man. Right? Read what you got, King. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 10. If thou faith, if thou what? If thou faith, if thou faith, come on. In the day of adversity, in the day of adversity and tribulation, go ahead. Thy strength is small. You don't have a lot of strength if you faint in the day of adversity. Your, your strength is small, the Lord said. So don't faint, man. Don't give up hope. Don't give up the fight. Endure to the end. Yeah, I wish I said what? He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. If you don't fight to the end, you're going to fall, man. You're going to fall. Right? So let's endure. Let's keep these commandments. Let's separate ourselves from America more and more. There's nothing in this society. Right? What, what, what are you going to do? You're going to go You're gonna go to a dead rapper's concert? Some guy named Doodoo? Right, you're going to go to a dead rapper's concert and you're going to sit up there and, and party with a dead body? Don't you know you're unclean for seven days when you're around a dead body? But you're going to have a damn party with a dead body, man. Our people are, 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 are gone, man. You're gone. Right, you have become lower. You have become... Give me, uh, give me that, Jeremiah 5. Uh, give me Jeremiah 5 and start at 22. 
You become lower than Esau and the other nations. Man, that's Esau's spirit. Partying with the dead and, and doing enchantments and seances around dead bodies. But now our people are into that. Or you're a rapper and your brother's jealous of you so your brother kills you. That is going on with our nation, man. Now we partying with a dead body? The scriptures say when a dead is at rest, let him rest. You don't put his dead body up on a damn stage and have a concert with his dead body. But that's how people are, man. You're finished. You're finished, man. Do what you got, Ken. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Don't you fear the Lord, Israel? Right, you don't fear the Lord anymore? The Lord said, fear ye not me? Right, come on. Will ye not tremble at my presence? I said, will you not tremble at my presence? But now you know it, you, you kill each other and you celebrate by putting a dead body on stage and having a damn concert. We came. Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea. See, he placed the sand to bound the sea, God, by a perpetual decree. The Lord has let you know his power through his creations on the earth. God, that it cannot pass it. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. I said, our people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. You stubborn as hell, you don't want to follow these commandments, and the Lord going to judge you. Come on. They are revolting. Yeah, what? They are revolting. Our people are revolting. Come on. And go. You're gone, man. The Lord just said, you're gone, man. Right there, that's cold, man. The Lord said, you're revolting and you're gone. All right, we on. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. In his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. What do I say? For among my people are found wicked men. The Lord said, amongst his people are found wicked men. Right, that's cold, man. The Lord said, amongst my nation is some wicked men. Good. They lay wait as he that set of snares. They lay wait as he that set of snares. Come on. They set a trap. They do what? They set a trap. They set a trap. Come on. They catch men. You mainly catch other Israelite men. Good. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. They are become great and, and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. They, they overpass the deeds. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. And the Lord said, you overpass the deeds of the wicked, man. All right, that's that's Esau's spirit, yeah. Just unnecessary noise, right? Right, the, the Lord said, that's Esau's spirit. All that partying with a dead body and... and but now you overpass the deeds of the wicked, man. You kill each other and you put the damn body on stage and have a party around, the, a concert around the body. That's what our people have, have done, man. Right, you wicked and evil as hell. You overpass the deeds of the wicked. That's what the Lord said. You're revolted and you're gone. A lot of our people, there's no coming back. There's no coming back. We still gonna teach you and try to edify you. We still gonna try to bring you back to the most high. But for a lot of you, the door's already shut, man. The gate is closed, the door's already shut. Bring the priest up out. Huh? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 18. Son of man, the house of Israel, is to me become drunk. I said, what? The house of Israel is to me become drunk. I said, the house of Israel is to the most I become dross. The dross is the bad part of the metals, the, the reject, the refuse. All right, come on. Yay. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. I said, they're brass, tin, iron, and lead in the midst of the furnace. Come on. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. I said, because you are all become dross. Come on. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. I gather you into the midst of the fire in Jerusalem. Good. As they gather silver and brass, 
and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. To what? To melt it. So will I gather you in my anger? Call what the Lord is about to say, man. This is what the Lord going to do to the wicked of our people, though. Go ahead. And in my fear, the Lord says, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fear. You wicked Israelites, you wicked black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. The Lord says, so will I gather you in my anger. Come on. And in my fury, in my fury, go ahead. And I will leave you there. I will leave you there, come on. And melt you. And do what? And melt you. The Lord gonna do to the wicked of my people. And melt and melt you, man. That's cold, man. The Lord said he gonna melt you, Negroes. By shiver by shot. All you rebellious, evil Negro spirits, the Lord said, I'm gonna leave you there and I'm going to melt you. I'm gonna melt you in that nuclear flame and fire. Right, that's cold, man. Right, let's back it up with Zechariah. Back it up with Zechariah. Read. Read the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, and verse 12. And this shall be the plague. This shall be the plague. Go ahead. Wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet. Come on. And their eyes, and their eyes God, shall consume away in their home. Their eyes are going to consume away in their homes. God. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. God. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. The Lord said, Your flesh will consume away, your eyes will melt. That's the same thing like. Ezekiel, the Lord said he's going to consume that flesh. I'm going to leave you there and melt you. See that? The Lord got to do our people dirty, man. You know why the Lord got to do you dirty? Because you do him dirty. You don't want to keep the commandments. You're going to go tomorrow and worship the damn Babylonian goddess, man. You're going to go tomorrow and worship the queen of heaven with that Easter. Give me Acts 12 and 1. Give me Acts chapter 12 verse 1. You're going to go tomorrow and worship an abominable ancient Babylonian goddess. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to run up in them churches and be phony as hell. Now you're going to be phony as hell. You're going to be the holiest roller tomorrow. But you don't care about the Lord the rest of the year. You don't go to church, you don't go to church the rest of the year. But you're going to be the holiest roller tomorrow. That's why a lot of you are going to be destroyed, man, for being phony and fake. Read what you got, Kate. It's the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 1. Bring it out. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. A lot of our people, a lot of our prophets and disciples, they, and they suffered martyrdom. In other words, what? They died for the gospel's sake. They died to the word. Come on. And because he saw it please the Jew, so what? And because he saw it please the Jew, he saw it please the Jews. You have wicked Israelites, just like them. There's certain of our people that would love to see us dead. They would love to see the government kill us. They would love to see like like they, and some of these Christian pastor leaders. They get together and making alliances. How can we get these guys off the street? How can we get rid of these Israelites? They put holes in our Christian pocket. Their members are leaving and not giving up them ties no more. So how the hell can, how can we get rid of these guys, man? They're putting holes in our pockets, man. They're destroying our false religion. Our Illuministic CIA brainwashed religion that the Illuminati set us up to destroy the blacks and Latinos with. A lot of your organized religion is set up by the damn Illuminati and the CIA to destroy the people, man. A lot of these guys, so-called preachers ain't nothing but damn agents, man. They're agents of Satan. They're trained and they're set up to mislead you. Right, read what you got, King. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. So he wanted to take Peter also. He was going to kill Peter because the, the people were wicked as hell and wanted to see the disciples of Christ put to death. Right, come on. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Then were the days of unleavened bread. The days of unleavened bread is the Passover. Right, right. right give me uh, Luke 22 and 1 real quick to prove that. Read. And when he had apprehended him and put him in prison and delivered him to four Quartonians, Quartonians, Quartonians of soldiers. He delivered him to four Quartonians of soldiers, 16 soldiers. See that even back then it took the whole damn police force to guard a black man. It took the whole damn precinct for one black man. Right? Yeah. To keep him intending after Easter. Now they're going to flip the script and call the days of 11 bread Easter. 
But when you go into Greek, the translation is Pesach, which is Pesach, and the Hebrew, which is Passover. It might have been Easter for the Romans, but it was Passover for us. Like, a lot of times in this day and age, you see around the same time we keep in Passover, they keep in Easter. Our Passover was Thursday sundown, Easter's tomorrow for them. So it's the same thing during the Roman Empire, but the correct translation of uh, Easter there would be Passover or Pesach, Days of Unleavened Bread, which is the Passover. Read what you got, King. Here's the Rookie Read, chapter 22, verse 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread draw not. The Feast of Unleavened Bread you not. Come on. Which is called the Passover. Which is called what? The Passover. Which is called the Passover, man. All right, so the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Passover. So it's not Easter. It wasn't Easter for Israel. It was the Passover, the Days of Unleavened Bread. Now see, somebody will see that and get simple and say, see, the Bible's tampered with. That's why you can't trust the Bible. No, a scholar is going to look things up. And a scholar is going to see what's supposed to be put there. Even regular books that happen with, man. Sometimes you got to look up the etymology in different words or see is a different translation of what it really means. Right? But somebody will get simple and say, yeah, that's why I don't deal with the Bible. The Bible is tampered with. You can't trust the Bible. The scriptures is all messed up. No, you can't do that, man. But see, somebody simple will do that. But you black, Latino, Native American, Seminole Indians, we are here to teach you that you are the greatest people walking the planet Earth. Right? You're the greatest people. But what happened? You have to decrease yourselves to a degenerate, man. Right, to the dross, man. To that bad metal. And that dross, what's going to happen to it? The Lord going to melt you. I'm going to leave you there and melt you. That's what the Lord said going to do to you, man. But that's cold, but that's how, that's how it is with our people, man. That's how it is. That's what you deserve for being so evil and being against the commandments of the Most High. That's right. So it's time to wake up and repent, Israel. It's time to wake up and repent and come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments and your true identity and nationality. What's your nationality, brother? Huh? Gambia? Uh, jury's out. Where's Sabal? Sabal, where's Sabal when we need him? Huh? The jury's out? <laughs> Some more than they're watching the women fight, huh? Gambia, all right. Uh, that's probably him, or maybe I don't know. All right, the jury's out. Good. Intending after Easter, I don't want them to get mad at me. Yeah, Elder, everybody's a ha ha, my dear. They scattered Israel over there, right? Good. To bring him forth to the blue. You Negro only want to make every damn African an Israelite. Just as simple as you can be. Now, I was in uh, uh, the Bronx the other day. Straight up, Hamite walked up to me and said, Shalom, Elder Zabak. I said, Shalom, brother, how you doing? He said, uh, yeah, he said, I watch you and I watch, he said, he watch y'all uh, Sakari. I watch you and Sakari and uh, I, I get edified from y'all. I said, brother, what tribe you from, though? And he stuttered, the brother stuttered, and he said, Judah. And I looked him in the eye. In my mind, I didn't say that to him, but I said, you're not Judah. What's happening is a lot of these nations going to cleave on. A lot of these African Hamite nations and other nations, as they see Israel grow in the last day, they're going to try to become us, man. They're going to try to cleave unto us. Yeah, we read it even with Esau in Daniel 2.43. Right? So, Sabal, where you at? All right, Sabal, front and center. He says he's from Gambia. Is the jury out? Mm, the Gambia. Uh, the jury's out on that one. Could be, could be Southern Kingdom, might be a Hamite, who knows? Sabal has spoken, right? Right, God, right. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Sit on that, all right, because Peter eventually got delivered by the angels and got out of prison. Good? Good. Right, huh? Yeah, like you said, brother. But the brother's right, man. A lot of people gonna be cleaving. They seeing this. They seeing that we gonna come back in our rulership, man. But well, whether it's Israel or not, but listen, Ham ain't gonna be able to cleave, man, because Ham is the one that sold us over here. They helped the white man come over here. And the Lord knows everyone. That's why he say, listen, when the angels come, you ain't gonna be able to fool them. They gonna know because you gotta get your payments. Because you the one that brought us up. You the one that helped the white man bring us over here. And now you ain't gonna be able to jump on now that you see we're rising back. Now you wanna jump on. But we got 400 years of our backs being whipped for what Ham sold, for what you did to us in bringing us over here. 
to the most I watch it, man. Go ahead. Cool! Right? Elder Chirac came in to, to, to break you off a little something. All right? But, you know, that's how it is. See, when the, when, the, uh, when the nations, like the elder was saying, when the nations see us rise, they gonna wanna be at home, man. They gonna wanna try to get down. And you wanna be down. Now you can't be down now that things is cracking. Now, nah, son, you can't get in there nowhere, son. Can't get up in there nowhere, son. Now you wanna get down because you see things cracking, things popping now. So you wanna try to clean more. Now nah, you can't get up in there. You can't get up in there nowhere, son. Right, yeah, you can't get up in there. So where you at? Where you at, King? Yeah, Con, Con, you, what you on there? Which one? Oh, Luke 22, we read that, yeah. So you nations, man, is only, this is only for Israel. You so-called black, Latino, Native American, and Seminole Indian, stop giving away. Give me Jeremiah 2, 20, uh, 233. Stop giving away everything to these other nations. Stop wanting them to be down. Stop wanting them to be, to be a part of everything. Have something to your damn self for a change. That's right. But now all you want to do is give everything over to these nations. That's all you want to do. When are you ever going to have anything of your own? When are you going to hold on to something of your own? But you want to give everything over to, to the other nations. The damn a black man got on his knees last night. And what about the white man too, brother? God damn, man. Well, a lot of you southern niggas, you finished, man. Not all of you, not all of you. Got a lot of our beautiful brothers and sisters down here in the south. That's in the truth. But you nigga been on a goddamn plantation, getting on your knees, talking about, but you spoke about the white man too, brother. I said, man, you and some of you Augusta niggas are finished, man. You finished, man. Well, why would you get on your damn knees and say, well, what about the white man? What about the sodomites, right? That nigga asked about the sodomites too. Man, all that, man, got on his damn knees to beg and plead for two of the most abominable things that the most are going to judge when he returned. The damn white man and the sodomites. But that's how people are, man. Nigga got on his knees and begged and plead for the damn sodomites and Esau. Read what you got, King. This the book of Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 20 and 33. Why trimmer style thy way to seek love? What did Lord say? Why trimmer style thy way to seek love? Yeah, see, a lot of you Negroes, man, you want to trim your way to seek love. All right, you want to compromise. You want to make a deal. You want to sneak east on the other nations in. You want to say, oh, there's another way for us to, you know, some way, somehow, they could be forgiven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But, but not the ones today, they didn't do it. No, but what happened though? The ones today, you say the ones today didn't do it, but guess what? They are descendants of their ancestors. They're descendants of their forefathers. They, they are reaping the benefit. You think the white race of today is not reaping the benefits of what they, their forefathers took? Why do you think throughout history, the so-called white man, he names his businesses father and son, such and such and son, because they pass everything down to their children. Right, why well, all the generational wealth that they raped, robbed, and murdered and stole from us and everybody else, they pass it down to their sons. Right, and, and, and every nation of people know the history. They know their history except ours. So you think the so-called white race don't study their history? That's what they say. Uh, well, yeah, that was our ancestors. We know what they did, but we're different now. No, you're no different because you still got that stolen property in your possession. And you're not going to give it back. You're too proud. You're too proud and puffed up, so you got to pay. When your house shall return, you got to pay. Read, King. Therefore, as thou also taught the wicked ones, they were thy way. What did I say? Therefore, as thou also taught the wicked ones, thy way. Therefore, as thou also taught the wicked ones, thy way. You so-called black, Latino, Native American, and Seminole Indian, you have taught the wicked ones your way. And sister, get out, sister. Get out, sister. I don't know what the hell you doing with him. I don't know what the hell you doing with him, man. What the hell you doing with that piece of work there? Right, give me a uh, Proverbs 11.21. Right, that cracker look like he about, about five days left, man. If his ass don't take no Geritol, he gonna drop dead. Right, he gonna drop dead. Man, I won't be rushing with him. I'm just waiting for this, this white man to die. Right, you know what I'm saying? There give me another white man. Right, if his ass don't take that Geritol, he got about five days left. 
Read what you got, King. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and verse 21. Come on out. Though hand join in hand. Though hand join in hand. Go ahead. The wicked shall not be unpunished. Though you hand in hand with that old devil. Right, that old devil that, that looked like he got damn arthritis everywhere. Though you hand in hand with him, it's not going to stop their punishment. But right, you know, you got a new thing in the earth today where you blacks and Latinos, you think if you race mix, you think if you cleave to the other nations that you're going to blend in with them. It's not going to happen, buddy boy. It's not going to happen. You think that, you think if you if you try to blend in with the other nations, everything going to be all right. A lot of you so-called black and Latino, what happened is you get, you get tired of the so-called suffering. But the Lord said, get it. You think when you get the damn white man or woman, you got something new. That's what that damn Hamite African, right, he uh, would, had so much to say about Judah, and then got a white woman that she stabbed his ass and killed him. Right by a shiver man. Right, all the black, black people are crackheads, black people are on welfare, black people are this, they nasty, they got AIDS, all the stereotypes. All of this stuff, like the movie Precious. You ever watch that movie Precious with a, uh, 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 uh with a Monique. They got every stereotype you can think about in that goddamn movie. That, that African had my, he had all kinds of tweets with them stereotypes about the tribe of Judah. And said the white woman looks sexy in a thong. She looks sexy in Bati, like Benjamin say, Bati Rider shorts. She looks sexy. And she killed this African ass, man. Uh, shiver my shot, man. She killed this Hamite ass for trying to talk slick against Judah. Right? Oh, you're so much better. You nations come over here, and you so much better than a black American man when you get with the white man. All the white man do is use you to further destroy Judah. That's all he do. He use you, yeah, Yankee boy, and, and, and uh, them blacks are lazy and this and that. Every nation that come over here, he tell you, oh, them black Americans are no good. So you stinking nasty damn Hamites, but you think you something, so you get proud, you come over here, you think you proud against Judah. Because the white man use you to further oppress the Negro. And the white woman turn around and stab your ass. And that damn monkey blood you've been drinking in Africa spills out of your damn veins and you die. Am might. All right, read what you got, Kate. This is the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. God. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. I will put up with these curses. Come on. Because I have sinned against him. Because I what? I have sinned against him. Because I sinned against the Lord. Come on. Until he plead my cause. Until he what? Until he plead my cause. Until he plead my cause. Go ahead. And execute judgment for me. And what? Execute judgment for me. Until the Lord plead our cause and execute judgment for us. We will bear the indignation. 
We gotta put up with the curses. That's what it's saying. We gotta bear the curses that the Lord put on us. You're not gonna run it high. Like I said, if you're if you're a black or Hispanic man, you're not gonna circumvent the curses by becoming a damn woman. If you're a black man or a black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, you're not gonna circumvent the curses by marrying a white man or woman or a Chinese or a Japanese or an African or an Arab or an East Indian. You're not gonna get around the curses doing that. Are uh, you not? You might as well bear the indignation. You might as well suffer, and then the Lord got your back. Right? right? The Lord, my, the Lord got your back. Bring it out, man. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel, against any of the children of Israel, come on, shall not a dog move his tongue. Oh, one thing with us as a nation, although we're suffering, when the smoke clear and in the end, the Lord gonna defend us. He's gonna defend his nation, man. Right? Although we're suffering. So against any of the children of Israel, a dog will not move his tongue. Come on. Against man or beast, against man or beast, go ahead. That he may know how that the Lord doeth put a difference. Lord doeth put a difference, come on, between the Egyptians, between the Egyptians, go ahead, and Israel. That the Lord said he put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. We're not the same people. Right, we're not the same people, and that's why the Lord brought judgment on that damn hand like that. Since you so proud and got so much stereotypes and negativity to say against the lion of the tribe of Judah. Right. Don't you know what the name Judah means? It means your Yahweh's praise. Right? The tribe of Judah are the Lord's chosen people along with all the other 11 tribes. So you get on there and talk all these stereotypes that niggas is crackheads. They, 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 they on welfare. And you go run and get that damn white woman, and she stab you, ham, and kill you. All right, she sliced that cheese, sliced up that ham. All right, that cheesy white woman sliced up that damn hamite. She has some hamite slices with that cheese, with that Swiss cheese. Now you white women smell like damn cheese, man. Rotten curdled milk, man. So she has some damn ham with that cheese. All right, me, King. The book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Come on. Because I have sinned against him. Because what? I have sinned sin against him. You know what we got to do? We got to acknowledge our sins. We got to bear the indignation of the Lord. We got to realize as a nation of people, we sinned against the most high. All right. And we got to take our punishment. Take it like a man. Right. Go ahead. Until he plead my call. Right, don't, do the, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. All right, we did the club, so we got to do this time in hard captivity, man. But our release date is coming soon. Yes, right, go ahead. And we ain't going to be no damn parole or probation. All right, no parole, no probation, free. And now your ass going to jail, boy. You going to jail, Esau. You going to jail, Ham. You going to jail, Ishmael, Elon, Moab, Ammon. You going to jail. All right, and you're going to suffer and be punished for a thousand years. But right, we're going to have our way in the kingdom of heaven, and we're going to get vengeance on all you nations. We can And execute judgment for me. And what? And execute judgment for me. Come on. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. The Lord said he's going to bring us forth to the light, and we're going to behold his righteousness. He's going to give us the kingdom, and we're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the kingdom. What you holding? Right, Rick. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord had performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria. He's going to punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria. You are the nation from your kings down. You're going to be punished. Right, come on. And the glory of his high look. For he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. See, a lot of you, a lot of you nations, the nations, and even our people, you get proud and you think you did something by the strength of your hand. You think some way, somehow, that you're so powerful that you did what you, whatever you did. No, it's the Lord, man. The Lord said, "What He rules in the kingdom of men." All right, go ahead. And by my wisdom. For I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. The Lord said he's going to put down the inhabitants like a valiant man, like a brave, courageous warrior. 
That's what the Lord is saying. Read what you got, King. Psalms 149, start at 1. Psalms 149 and 1. This is what the song. Chapter 149 and verse 1. Hey, what's going on over there? Everything okay? Right, okay. All right, what happened over there? All right, okay. All right, no, okay. Good behavior, good behavior, Esau. Good behavior, good, good respectable behavior for them. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 149 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. So when it says praise be to the Lord, hallelujah. Praise be to you. How about you? Right, okay, God. Right, what mission? Go ahead. And his praise be to the Lord. In the congregation of the saints. And what? And his prayer in the congregation of the saints. And his prayer in the congregation of the saints. Come on. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. See that? Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Why do we rejoice in the most high? Because we his chosen people. Because the kingdom is going to come to us. That's why we rejoice in the Lord. God. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let the children of Zion be joyful in our king. Hamashiach Yahweh that's who the king of Israel is. Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Good. Let them praise his name in, in the dance. Let, the sing, let them sing praises unto him with the temple and heart. The Lord says sing praises unto him with the temple and heart. Meaning what? Even in your music, you're supposed to praise the Lord. But you're supposed, you're supposed to exhort spiritual music. Not some music by some rapper named Dudu. All right, that's not what the hell, because you know what, that, the, the man, the man named himself that because the music is dumb, man. Right, the music ain't, ain't. right, he know it, he know it. All right, because the music ain't nothing, man. Right, the music is dumb, so that's why he named himself Doodle. Right, come on. For the Lord take pleasure in his people, he will beautify the meat with salvation. The Lord said he take pleasure in his people. Why is the Bible being possessive? Why is the Lord saying he take pleasure in his people? Why did he say every people? Why did he say the whole world? Why did he say all people? He said he take pleasure in his people. Because the Lord is only for one nation, man. You can't get that through your head. Your hard head is stubborn and rebellious. You can't get that through your head. Come on. He will beautify the meek. What is he going to do? He will beautify the meek with salvation. He's going to beautify the meek with salvation. The Most High going to give us salvation in the kingdom of heaven. Who's the meek? The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Come on. Let the saints be joyful and glory. God. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. God. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahushai be in their mouth. Go ahead. And a two-edged sword. And a what? And a two-edged sword. And a two-edged sword. Go ahead. In, in their, their hand. hand. And a two-edged sword be in their hand. Come on. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. To execute vengeance and punishment upon the heathen. Go ahead. And punishment upon the people. And what? And, and punishment upon, upon the people. people. Vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Go ahead. To find their king. To do what? To find their king. Like the brother read, the king of Assyria, the stop hearted, these men of the other nations, these leaders, these illuminate, these secret society leaders at the top of the realm, all of them. Right. The Lord said what? To find their kings with chains. To find their kings with chains. Go ahead. And their nobles with feathers of iron. And their nobles, the top leaders, the kings and the noble men. They're going to be our slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Oh. That's said the Lord. That's said the Holy Bible. We're going to find their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. All right, come on. To execute upon them the judgment written. God. This honor has all his sons. See that? We're going to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor has all the saints of the Most High. Yes. Who are the saints of the Most High? Here's what I like. Jump, jump over, matter of fact. Prove that 148 and 14. Jump over to 148 and 14. Because we are the saints of the Most High. And why is the Bible saying that the saints will put their enemies in chains? Why is the Bible saying that the saints are going to bind you with fetters of iron? Because that's the reward that we're going to get, man, for suffering. So don't go and run, run, run. You black women, run, get a white man. You're going to have a king in the kingdom of heaven, man. You can have a king now, hell, if you get yourself in order. You black men, don't run and get the white woman. You can have your beautiful wives of the nation of Israel in the kingdom of heaven. You can have them now. But no, you want to run. 
and think you're going to blend in with this world, you're going to compromise with the society, and you're going to escape the curses. Right. Not going to happen. Right. All right, we don't care. Mr. Rookie Soul! Touches the horn of his people. Go ahead. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. The praise of all his saints. Even of who? The children of Israel. Even of the children of Israel. Go ahead. A people near unto him. There you go. A people near unto himself. Even of the children of Israel. He exalts the horn of his saints. Even the children of Israel. The people that are near to him. So the saints, we got a great day coming to us. We are going to reward the other nations the same way they rewarded us and double like it tell you in the book of Revelation. Double, man, you're going to get double for what you have done to our people. And you're going to suffer, you're going to be punished and the Lord going to get you in that day. So the best thing to do is to repent and get on the winning side. Right. Get on the repent and winning side because America is a losing side. Right. This kingdom is a losing side. You might think it's not, but it's sinking, man. Like they say, it's circling the drain. It's going down. So get with the new program of the Most High. Read this is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Mashiach. What do I say? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Mashiach. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's where we got to come into, the unity of the faith. Leave this world alone. And come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Come back to the unity of the faith. Go ahead. And of the knowledge. The what? And of the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of this world. Of the Son of God. The knowledge of uh, Hotel, Egypt, Egyptology. Of the Son of God. New Age now. Son of God. I said, knowledge of the Son of the Most High power. Yahweh by Shiva Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Right, come on. Unto a perfect man. Unto what? Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. How do you become a perfect man? By coming back to these law statutes and commands. But Christ, Yahweh Wide is the gate and broad is the way that these to Right, come on. Don't you no more henceforth be children tossed to and fro. Go ahead. And carried about. And carried about. Go ahead. With every wind of doctrine. Yeah, just every. Those are carried away like the wind, man. Anything that comes up, you running around carried away like the wind. Why? Because you have no foundation. Truth teaches you who you are. This truth keeps you. But a lot of you, you run to and fro. You don't want no truth. Phony one time out of the year and act like you love the Lord. You don't love the Lord. You're going to church for a show, man. You're going just to show everybody see you, the pastor and the other women. They're going to see that expensive dress you bought. They're going to see your big colorful hat. You're not going for the sincerity and truth, man. Right, read what you got, Kenny. Uh, yeah. With every wind of doctrine. With every wind of doctrine. Come on. By the slight of men. By the slight of men, God. And cunning craftiness. And what? And cunning craftiness. Yeah, cunning craftiness with your doctrine. Come on. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And you gotta remember something. Hold that. Give me uh, Matthew 13, 19. You gotta remember something. When you come into this truth, especially when you might be a little bit new, you gotta remember Satan is gonna come for you, man. They're going to they lie and wait to deceive with their doctrine. So you got to be careful. Matthew uh, 13, 19. Who got it? Wait, you got it? Read. Read. Matthew 13, 19. Come on. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom. Come on. And understand if it not. But you don't really understand. Go ahead. Then cometh the wicked one. What did Lord say? Then cometh the wicked one. Then comes Satan. Go ahead. And catcheth away. That which was sown in his heart. Now they come and try to take away the truth that was sown in your mind. You may not fully understand everything yet. You're still learning. You're still in like the babe stage. You're still getting edified. But what happens is, come here, Sean. Right, come here, Sean. Right. So what happens is, you don't you don't fully understand. So here come the wicked one to catch away that which was sown in your heart. All right, read on. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. And then you receive seed by the wayside. So you got to be careful because they're going to lie and wait to deceive. They're going to come with crafting cunningness and lie and wait to deceive. Satan, man. 
They might come by your family. They may come by your spouse, your best friend. And you think, oh no, this is, this is just my family trying to warn me of something. My family's just trying to warn me to not be indoctrinated. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You know what it is? The problem is Satan is using that person that's closest to you so you can get emotional and fall to their doctrine. Right, that's what they're doing. Read what you got, King. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 9. Win or not with every wind. The Lord said, win or not with every wind. Don't be carried about. Don't run after every damn form of doctrine. Right, come on. And go not into every way. And what? And go not into every way. And go not into every way. Go ahead. For so do it the sinner. Yo, 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 yo. I got to be on point, man. Right, the tranny just, just got y'all, man. The tranny almost got y'all. All right, the tranny almost got y'all. Y'all brothers are slipping, man. Like the tranny almost got y'all, man. Watch out for the watch out for the Roman tranny. Right? Well, that's a damn shame. Watch out for the Roman tranny. Come on, man. You can't be letting the tranny in, man. Right? Come on, man. Y'all catch the slipping, man. You can't give me <laughs> Give me through the run me 22 and 5. Real quick, right? Real quick. Y'all can't be letting the tradies in, man. Watch your back. Right, this ain't Malik Yoba. Right. All right, I'm stepping up, right? Nah, this ain't Malik Yoba, son. All right, y'all slipping. Y'all got caught slipping. Yo, yo, homie. Hey, yo, you got to repent, brother. Brother, sister, whatever you're trying to be, you got to repent, man. Right, brothers can't be letting the tradies in. <laughs> I see what you got, Kay. Right. Yeah, no, uh, what I call for Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Read. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A man should not put on a woman's garment. Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's an abomination, man. That's an abomination. All right, so. Brothers, y'all can't be slipping with the trenches, man, right? All right, I, I got to do an Isaac on you some ball. Damn! Right? <laughs> Come on, we don't, we don't let trannies in up here. Gun! 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 Nah, the trannies can't come up here. You got to repent, man, or you're going to die. Right? Yeah, watch your back. Pause. Pause, no homo, right? Watch your back, literally, in that case, man. No trannies can't get up here. You got to repent and become a man again. All right? Read what you got, King. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Yeah. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Yeah. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, now bring it on home. Jump up to 23 and 1. Bring it on home. Bring it on home, man. The Lord said, look, if you, if you dress like the other sex, you're an abomination to the Lord. If you try to change your sex, you even more of an abomination to the Lord. Right. right? Case in point. Right? Like I said, there's nothing wrong with a woman knowing how to fight and defend herself, but you still got to keep your feminine weight. If you got to whip the hell out of an uh, Edomite woman, then that's fine. Right. 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 You know he's a black man? Hey, do you know the king is a black man? Do you know the king is a black man? Praise God. Right, do you know the king is a black man? Praise God. Praise huh? God. Right, what color is the king? The king forever. Yeah, what, co son. what color is he? Not as what color is his son? What color is his son? What color is his son? Just say it. Oh, like a rich knight. That's right, that's right. Oh. Oh. Good. Oh. Well, you better have said it. You better have said it, right? That's right, that's right. I am black but comely. I come here, Shana. Right, God. You better have said it, goddammit, or that pickup truck would have been getting picked up. Right? You better have said it. You better not said he was Esau, goddammit. Or that pickup truck would have been getting picked up. Read what you got, Kate. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 1. Deuteronomy 23 and 1, come on. He that, he that is wounded in the stomach. He that is wounded in his genitalia, God, or have his private member cut off. You gotta be sick in your damn brain if you wanna cut your rod off. Yeah, I said it. All right, straight like that, right? Any man that wants to do away with his privy member, you got to be sick in your damn head, man. Sure. What's wrong with you, man? But the Lord said, if you do that, read. 
shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The Lord said you can't even come into the congregation, man. You cut If you cut that off, then you cut off. Right, God? Yeah. The Lord said if you cut that off, then you cut the hell off. Right, read again from the top. Deuteronomy 23 and 1, King. He that is wounded in the stone. You wounded in your stones. Go ahead. Or has his privy member cut off. The Lord said, listen, if you cut your privy member off, come on. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Then you cut the hell off from the congregation, man. You got something wrong with you, man. The Lord said, listen, I'm not trying to hear nothing, son. If you do that, you cut off. And that's why in this society, that's why this society is going to be destroyed. Because you got doctors that will perform sex change operations, man. So that's why this society got to be destroyed. But how the hell are you going to, as a surgeon, you're going to try to turn a damn man into a woman or a woman into a damn man? You're supposed to say, listen, we don't do that here. Right? right? Like Wakanda, goddammit. We don't do that here. Right? You're the mad scientist, kind. Say, I'm a physician. I help to heal people. I operate on people so they can get better. I don't operate on you to make you a damn different sex. But this society is wicked as hell. All you care about is the money. Money, you know what I'm saying? Because you know them surgeries bring you a grip. They bring you some stacks. So that's all you give a damn about. Like you want to become, they have a, 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 they show these memes and stuff where one minute the dude looked like one way and then they say, oh, he's made his transition. You can't even tell that used to be a damn man. All right, well, well we can tell. The spirit going to show us. God damn, we ain't getting caught out there. <laughs> why we, why we, we, nah, why we ain't letting them in. All right, we ain't letting them in. We ain't getting caught slipping. All right, pause. Right, but anyway, let's continue with the good word of the Lord. But Atlanta, repent, man. You got a lot of, you got a lot of sodomite, homosexual, lesbian energy down here. And you got to repent, man. You got to repent, Atlanta. It's bad down here. It's bad, man. It's like modern day Sodom and, and, and Gomorrah. Right. Right, you got to repent down here. And that's our message to you. Matter of fact, give me that. Drop everything. Revelations 11 and 8. Revelations 11 and 8. Right? You got to repent from that lifestyle, that alternative lifestyle, Atlanta. And you got more, again, more abominations down here than the damn Chinese fish market. All right? You got all the abominations in the land, man. And you got to stop. You got stuff down here you don't even recognize. I don't know if that's a man, woman, I don't know what that is. Right, see that? Some creation they made in the lab. The damn Center for Disease Control, they're creating species. It's not even man or woman no more, just a dead species they create. All right, read what you got, King. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. Bro. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Our people, dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Come on. Which is spiritually is called. Sodom and Egypt. Spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, God. Where also our Lord was crucified. Yeah, because you crucified Yahweh Shah's image here. Right? You crucified him by lying on him, putting him up as a white man. Telling all these lies that he loved all the nations. That's the second spiritual crucifixion of the Mashiach. But it said this land is like modern day Sodom. You got nothing but a bunch of damn abominations everywhere. Right, black man getting on his knees to plead for damn homosexuals, man. Obama, we in Augusta teaching last night. This nigga will bow down on his knees when you talking about the homosexuals. That's right. Our people are gone, man. They're gone. They're gone. We read it earlier. The Lord said this people are revolted and gone. We, we read it earlier in Jeremiah 5, man. You're revolted and gone. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, bowing down to these damn heathens, man. Bowing down to take up for this damn sodomite spirit in this society. Right, pause, man. Super pause. But anyway, not up here. All right, not up here. Not up here. We're not letting them in. You can't get in. All right, don't get caught slipping, Akio. Read on. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindred and tongues and nation shall see their dead bodies three days. And right, give, me, give me Isaiah 3 and 9. All right, give me the book Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 9. And you give me um, Sirach 19 and 29. All right? Give me Sirach 19, 29. A man may be known by his look. I believe that is. Read what you got, Kate. The book of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9. The show of their hey, countenance. Hey. Yo, 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 yo. The show of their countenance. Do it witness against them. The Lord said the show of their countenance witness against them. Go ahead. 
and they declare their sin as Sodom. They declare their sin as Sodom. Go ahead. They hide it not. They hide it not. Come on. Woe unto their soul. But they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The Lord said, Woe unto their soul, they reward evil to themselves. To show up their countless witness, witness against them. They declare they sin as Sodom. They don't even hide it, man. But you go and get your privy member cover off and become another damn sex, man. The opposite sex. Read, Kate. It's the book of Son Ruth, chapter 19, and verse 29. Yeah. A man may be known by his look. A man may be known, or a woman, hell, may be known by their look. Go ahead. And one that have understanding by his countenance. One that have understanding by his countenance. Go ahead. When thou meanest him. Go ahead. A man's attire. A man's attire. Go ahead. And excessive laughter. Excessive laughter. Go ahead. And gait. And gait. G-A-I-T. Which is the way a man walks. Or the way a man, you know, moves. Right? Come on. Show what he is. It's going to show what he is, man. Right? Your countenance. Your look. Your gait. All right? It's going to show what you are. So men of the Lord, man, the scriptures say a man of the Lord scarcely smile. Do that mean we laugh and we don't laugh and have a good time? Of course not. But you need to be serious when you need to be serious. And you don't need to be playing when it comes to this gospel and this truth. And you don't need to be playing with these damn demons in this world. You need to repent and come back to the laws of the Bible. Simple as that. Uh, get the line up, uh, Sabal. A uh, few more and I'm going to come down. All right, pass it to the next dynamic speaker by Shimamashiach Yawishak. Elijah, all right, come. All right, all pray. Give me a couple more. We're going to give it, pass it to Elijah. Go ahead, shout out. Right, so let's get this work, Israel. Let's get in order. Let's keep these commandments. And let's slowly see the fall of our enemy. Good? Good. If you don't want that, man, stay with Babylon and uh, I'll see you next lifetime. All right? Stay with Babylon and be destroyed. That's what's going to happen. Stay with Babylon and be wiped out, be destroyed, be dealt with by the power of Yahweh and Yahweh shot. Stay with this kingdom and perish. That's on you. It's on you. All right? You don't want the Lord, the Lord don't want you. All right, repent or die. That's right. All right, that's it. That's it. That's your, that's your, your two choices, man. Right, like you can get mad at us for saying it, but the Lord said it first. All right, read what you got, King. Jeremiah 4 and 1. Give me Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 1. Repent or die. All right, that's it. That's your only choice that you have. Give me us second Ezra 327. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4 and verse 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, said the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thy abominations out of the, out of out my sight, then shalt thou not be removed. What did the Lord say? Then shalt thou not remove. The Lord said, if thou wilt return, kind. If thou wilt return, O Israel, said the Lord, return unto me. Read on. And if thou wilt put away the abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. The most I will set us up as a nation to rule forever and ever our money. Read what you got, King. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 27. And so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of thine enemies, and their deeds than any better than inhabit Babylon. No, that's not it. Give me um give me second Ezra 9, 9 13. All right, let's close with that. We're second Ezra 9 and 13. All right, read, read that. It's the book of second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. The Lord said, don't be curious about how the ungodly is going to be punished. Come on. And when? And when? Go ahead. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. What did the Lord say? But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. But inquire how the righteous is going to be saved. So Esau, the other nations, the wicked of our people, eh, don't really worry about them. We just uh, uh, rebuke them and, and show you that the Most High going to deal with them and judge them. But worry about how Israel going to be the chosen and make it and rule forever and ever. Amen. 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 Challenge fly. 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 Chall
Elijah out of sight up on deck. Hello, yeah. Good. Yeah, thank you, elder. Give it up for the elder, man. Give it up for the elder, man. Come. All praise. All praise. Man. All praise. Where my read is at? Bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. Come, 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 man. Uh, matter of fact, let me get Deuteronomy 28, 15. We're going to talk about these curses, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to bring these curses out. We're going to get some of this milk out. Because I'm pretty sure that, you know, some people out here who need to be edified and understand, you know what I'm saying, why we in the position that we in. Right? So, bring that out. Who got it? 28. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You see that? So the Most High said, if we don't follow his commandments, and keep his laws and statutes that all of these curses was going to come upon the nation of Israel and overtake us. And we have been overtaken. All you got to do is look around in our community. You can tell that we've been overtaken. All you got to do is look around Peachtree Street right now. You can tell that we've been overtaken. I say about 20 something years ago, I used to live to the left of here. And then when you get the... Down there, you make another left and bring me right there in Techwood Projects. Right? That's where I was. I don't rob the snow all up and down this street, breaking the Lord's commandments. Now, I'm on these same streets where I used to do negativity and wickedness, and I'm out here trying to edify my people. That's change for your butt. That's right. You understand? That's the magnificence and the power of your how about shim your how was shot. See, because if you want true change, the white man ain't going to give you true change. You know what I'm saying? The other nations ain't going to give you true change. The only way you're going to get true change is if you open up these scriptures and read this Bible. That's it. There's no other way to get it unless you open up that Bible and understand who you are and what's going on with you with these curses. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 28, King. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. You hear that? The Lord shall smite you with madness. I can't even see it, but I'm pretty sure, sure since the time we've been standing here, it's been a lot of madness walking up? back and forth. Yeah, it is? Okay. You can tell that What's this madness out here. Okay. Anytime you're a man and you're trying to turn yourself into a woman, that's madness. That's a psychiatric spiritual problem. It's madness. The way we treat each other is madness. Right? We kill each other. Just like the brother said, we kill each other and turn around and put the brother on the stage and throw a concert and charge $40 for everybody to get in. That's madness. And the Lord said he gonna strike us with madness if we don't keep his law, statutes, and commandments. All those people that was in that club, if they would have been keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, then they wouldn't have been in that club. You wouldn't have to worry about Gudu get killed. Oh no, his name ain't Gudu no more. It's Dudu. Right? So we wouldn't have to worry about the Dudus of the world being on stages when they dead. Dealing with madness. Finish that. And blindness. And blindness. Not the kind of blindness like I got, but that real spiritual blindness. Because a lot of y'all got 20-20 vision and y'all can't see a damn thing. You don't even know why you going through the problems you going through. You don't know why grandmama got high blood pressure. You don't know why she got arthritis. You don't know why he got uh, diabetes and got to get his feet cut off and all of these things. These are the different plagues that get put on you when you out here committing all type of wickedness. Not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But it comes on down to this. 
if you eat properly according to the dietary laws, then you won't have to worry about some of these sicknesses that we have in our community. That's right. Which is a curse. High blood pressure is a curse. Heart disease is a curse. Diabetes is a curse. Right? All of these things that we get, the gout is a curse. Country meat and pork, lobster, shrimp, crab, and all type of other wickedness. Right? Don't you see how people look at us in astonishment? When you walking around with your pants hanging off your ass, that's that's gonna make the people look at you in astonishment. Our people are walking astonishment. We the most creative, the most rebunctious, we are the most talented, the most resilient, the strongest, the fastest people on the face of the earth. But we at the bottom of the totem pole with all of that talent. You think these other nations would be able to get above us if they didn't have divine intervention to help them out? There's no way in the world they would be able to be above us. But we put ourselves in this position, right? And that's why we astonishment. We astonishment to the other nations. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That's happening right now, ain't it? I mean, we don't even got to talk about what was going on on the plantations where they were selling our children to other nations and other plantations. But look at it right now. Child Protective Services will run up in your house and take your children like it ain't nothing. That's right. And you know the crazy part about it? Our people is gangster as hell when they come to each other. But when the white man come with the social worker and the police and they say, yeah, give me little man, man, little pookie right quick. We be, be coming to take them away. We'll the fight at. You don't even stand up to fight for them to stop them from taking your kids. You just let them take them out your house. Right? Shalom, King. Shalom. You see what I'm saying? And this is going on right now. The curses. The curses. This is the Bible we read it. Right? Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hands. That's right. You ain't going to be no might in your hand. Right? Because as strong as we are as a people, when it comes to going up against Esau and these other nations, we don't have no might. Might means strength. You don't have no military strength. You don't have no financial strength. You don't even have no physical strength. And you definitely ain't got no spiritual strength because you ain't rolling with your Bosch and your shot. Right. So what are you going to do? He going to stand there and let them take them babies. Right? He going to stand there and let, he gonna let them abuse them children. Right? When your children get up in Esau's house and Esau is lying to them. Esau is molesting them and doing them dirty in these other nations. Or they might take your children and give them to a homosexual couple. Right? Now your kid gotta wonder, wake up every morning and wonder why his daddy or his adopted daddy is waking up in the bed with his other adopted daddy. Pause. Just disgusting, right? Give me 54 and 56, right? 54 and 56, right? So we want, we want y'all to understand what's going on out here with these curses. These curses are affecting us every day, right? And as the scriptures say, they should be for a sign and a wonder. You should wonder why we going through the trials and tribulations that we going through instead of embracing them, right? We, we, embrace, we embrace the struggle. We embrace the trials and tribulations and these curses. We embrace them wickedly, right? We don't even wonder no more. And instead, we'll go make a song about it to make a record and then go party to it. You understand, Shalom? Right? We go party to it. And it's a damn going shame. And it even affects our relationships. It affects our families. It affects our marriages. If we have them. Right? But what's happening? Read. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. See that? And you wonder why there's so many deadbeat fathers out here in the streets not taking care of their kids. This is prophecy. This is prophecy. But we know our sisters don't understand that. Neither do our brothers understand that. Right? 
our sisters get mad, they be like, I don't understand. They be wondering too. They be like, I don't understand this Negro. I don't understand why he don't want to take care of Lil Pookie and Ray Ray. Well, first and foremost, y'all ain't get into a relationship to create a Pookie and the Ray Ray from the jump. You was at the club with your booty shorts on. He was at the club with a book with a glass of Henny. And he seen you in your booty shorts and he said, I can hit that. And that's what he did. And you let him hit it. And then after he hit it, you had a baby. Now you want him to be responsible. Now you want him to be a responsible adult. You want him to take care of his responsibilities. But you know the crazy thing about it is, when you get in that type of situation, if you're not putting yourself in a situation where you're being responsible from the jump, you're having responsible relationships, responsible sexual interaction with your wife or your husband. Not some dude you met or some female that you met, right? And then you have a baby. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Let me get that scripture on marriages, uh, about marriage, honorable, and the bed is not the foul, right? You know what I'm saying? Marriage is honorable. We should be trying to marry our women. These sisters should be looking for men that want to marry them. So you ain't got to worry about your man abandoning your child or your child growing up without a father figure. And then you got our sisters, when they get in that situation, they say, hey, I'm the mother and the father. No, you're oh. not. You're just the mother wanting the father. You may be taking on the responsibilities that the man is supposed to be doing, but you are not the father. Right? That's you got right. that for me? Wait. Oh, somebody get that scripture for me over on this side, please. Let me get that. Marriage is honorable. Right? Oh, um, give me 56. The tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil for her husband, the husband of her bosom. That's right. Now he said the women, that the, our women was wouldn't set their feet on the ground for tenderness. Those is righteous women right there. That wasn't these ratchet women out here that don't want to get in the truth and don't want to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Look at these sisters around us with these, these beautiful sisters with these head wraps and these dresses on. Tender. Right? Like beautiful flowers. Right? But they walking in the light of the most high. They keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. These are the type of women that we should be looking for. These are the type of women that deserve protection. Right? But you know you got women out there like Jada Pickett. Jada Pickett says she ain't need Will Smith to go slap Chris Rock. She says she's the type of woman that don't need protection. Right? That's that spirit on her. Right? The same type of spirit that's on a lot of our sisters. Right? They don't want to get married. They just want to do it on their own. Right? So, read. And toward her son, and toward her daughter. That's right. A lot of times when these relationships don't work out with Pookie and Ray Ray, and you get left holding the bag with these babies, you be so mad and frustrated and upset with Pookie and Ray Ray, sometimes you take it out on little man or your little daughter. Right? Because it's frustrating. And we understand it. Right? Let me get um let me get 64. And the Lord shall, shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. That's right. Israelites is everywhere. You see this awakening happening. It's a beautiful thing to be living in this last days right here and, and being able to witness prophecy. It's also a beautiful thing for you to be participating in that prophecy. Because if you're standing here amongst us right now and you know that you're Israel, you are prophecy. You are the dry bones in the valley. You understand that, Khan? Yeah. That's right. We are the dry bones. Right? And we don't care if they call us crazy. We don't care if they say we in the cult. We don't care if they say we bugging out. Because the real bug outs is those people that's going to get up tomorrow morning and go up in the church and talk about Easter and let the pastor lie to them. 
give them their money, and then take the kids out to go find some eggs that came out of a rabbit. Come. Doesn't even make any damn sense at all. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Let me get 68. We. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Your friend. Your enemies. Your cousin. Your enemies. Your husband and wife. Your enemies. Your damn enemies. So when we came off them slave ships, who was we being sold to? Right? The white man is the goddamn devil. Right? That's, that's your enemy. That's our enemy. He's the ones that's putting GMOs in the food. He's the ones that's lying to you on the news. He's the one that's putting all of these subliminal messages in these movies to keep you docile and to keep you lost. Right? The goddamn white man. And though they walk around acting like they don't understand, they always play innocent when they get in front of the cat. Oh, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, though. My forefathers didn't have any slaves. Doesn't matter, you goddamn cracker. Because right now, you sitting there in the United States of America, benefits, getting benefits from, from your forefathers whooping our forefathers' backs. And also the same things that they doing to us now. It ain't changed. Police still shooting us down in the street. They just shot a brother in the back of the head a couple of days ago in Detroit. How the hell you sit on the back of a man's back and shoot him in the head? Talk about you trying to arrest them. These are the type of devils that we deal with, right? Drop that. Let me get um. Let me get um. Ephesians 22 and 26. Bring that up. This is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable, honorable in all, in the bed under foul. You hear that? Marriage is honorable above all, and the bed under foul. Get you a wife, you can do all the freaky stuff you want to do. With your wife, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about nothing. That's your wife. You understand? But you going up in the club, you going to find Keisha. You know what I'm saying? Or you going up in the club, you going to watch all of them daggone porno videos, and now you think that, you know what I'm saying, the Sheeta Mike is the most freakiest thing on the earth. Right? And nine times out of ten, they are, because they're a bunch of freaky-ass people. Right? They're disgusting. They'll do anything. You know what I'm saying? Angelina Jolie and that other track that she was married to, they was walking around with necklaces that had each other's blood in it. They brag about drinking each other's blood. I love my wife, but I ain't drinking her blood. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I wouldn't expect anybody else out here to be drinking no damn blood. Right? And so marriage is, marriage is honorable. It's nothing wrong with being married. But you know, we act like we can't find our, ourselves no good women and no good men. But it ain't no good women and no good men out here. Right? If you ain't keeping these little statutes and commandments, ain't nothing good about you. You ain't worth the time. Right? Wait. So tomorrow y'all gonna go up in the church to celebrate Easter. Y'all gonna have on your little suits and your gator shoes. The women gonna be dressed to the nines in their dresses. You know what I'm saying? Some of them going to be coming straight to the church from Peachtree Street. You know what I'm saying? Ain't even hit home yet. Why? Because it ain't no separation in the church between the clean and the unclean. Right? They ain't set apart in the church no more. That's right. How you set apart in the church and you let T.I. come in the church and do a sermon? You let, you let Kanye West run the church. He can't even run his own life. But you let him have Sunday worship. He can't even control the Edomite that got his kids. And that's another thing. See, you're supposed to marry your own people, right? Kanye went and got with this nasty-ass Edomite, Shedomite, Kim Kardashian. And now look at him. He left a beautiful black sister so he could be with that heathen. Right? Now she got his kids sitting on the next man's lap. Now he on the internet crying on Instagram, crying on Twitter. Oh, they taking my kids. 
They won't let my kids be around me. See that? See, when you under these curses, it don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how much fame you got. And when you get that type of money and you turn your back on your own community and your own sisters and you go marry one of these goddamn heathen women, you deserve every damn thing that you get. Every day, I don't feel sorry for Kanye West. Right? What you got for me? Give me Isaiah, um, give me Isaiah 20, I mean 26 to 10, 10, 26. Right, so we ain't gonna be able to trust, you ain't gonna be able to trust them pastors tomorrow, right? Them pastors gonna be up in there getting paid tomorrow. And meanwhile, you gonna be lying to your children, right? You know, it's these holidays and stuff that we be following, and it puts us in the positions to, to teach our kids not to trust us, right? How you gonna tell your kids not to tell you no lies, but you lie to them every holiday, right? You tell your kid don't lie to you, but then, when your kid tooth come out, you tell your kid the tooth fairy came and left some money under the pillow. Now your kid is thinking of ways to get rid of their teeth so they can get some money. Right? It out. The first thing we tell our children is don't take candy or anything from strangers. October 31st roll around, you dress your kid up in a dumbass outfit and you lead him to the stranger. Right. You hand walk your kid to the stranger Knock on the door, can I have some candy please? Trick or treat, right? And then, on Christmas, you tell your children that a fat cracker is gonna come down your chimney and leave you some presents for free. The crackers ain't never gave us anything for free but misery. That's right! A cracker ain't never gonna give you anything for free but misery. But no, you don't even put cookies or milk on the table, you know what I'm saying? Let your kid see it, you pour the cookies in the milk out, in the morning the kid believe a white man in the red suit came down there and ate the cookies in the milk, right? And then we gonna talk about Easter. Today, we was on Google. Guess what we found out, man? The Israelites been putting in so much work that the white man has to go and change the calendar. By next year, and you can Google this right now, go Google April, um, um, April, um, what, what's tomorrow, 17th? April 17th, right? And see if it say Easter Sunday and Easter Monday now. You know why? Because so many Israelites done told the truth in front of these whack-ass churches that they can't lie no more, so now they gotta flip it. So now they got Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. They letting the kids out of school Monday. That's our work. You know what I'm saying? You said, why is that? The reason why they doing that is because they know that Christ, it, he rose after three days. Yesterday they said it was Good Friday. Number one, it ain't nothing good about the about the um, the, the crucifixion of Yahweh Shai. But, you know, they said Good Friday, then after Good Friday, three days later he rose. But Easter's on Sunday. That's only two days. What's your name, King? Oh, that's Simeon? <laughs> What's going on with you? Yeah, man, what you got for me? All right, what you got? No, 56 and 10. This is Isaiah. This is Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 10. Check it out. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. See that? He said the watchman is blind. That's what these pastors are supposed to do. These pastors are supposed to be out here to look out for us. They're supposed to be letting us know when danger is coming. They're supposed to be letting us know that it's death and destruction on the way to this wicked ass place called America. But they ain't letting us know that. Why? Because they blind. Once again, not the blind like I have, but that spiritual blindness. Right? And some of them actually know the truth. T.D. Snakes, he know the truth. He admitted that he know the truth. He admitted, he even said he was a, he said he was an Israelite. Right? He said his people come from Ebo. But why he ain't telling his congregation who they are? 
because it's in his best interest not to let them know. Because as soon as he tells the people who they are, there goes his Todd money. There goes his mansions. There goes his private jets. Right? Read. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving the slumber. And that's exactly what they do. They love the slumber. All week, you don't see the pastor. You only see the pastor pop up, you know what I'm saying, when it's needed for him to come get your money. And after he gets your money, he's out of there. Right. Drop that. I want to go back on this whole situation with uh, uh, um, Will Smith's wife. Let me get... Let me get um, Isaiah 3, let me get Isaiah 3 and 16. See, let me tell your sister something, right? Some of y'all be on Clubhouse, and some of y'all here be on Clubhouse, y'all come in the Man Up showroom, and I be on there rebuking the sisters and correcting the sisters. And you know, they'll come in a little chat, or leave me a message in the back chat, talking about, oh, you always going in on the sisters, you hate the sisters, you must not like the sisters. No, I love you, that's why I tell your ass the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love you, that's why I tell you the truth. See, cause you're so used to dudes telling you that you a queen mother goddess. You so used to telling you, to, for, to men telling you how beautiful you are. And you so used to them kissing your ass because all they want to do is get in your pants, which you shouldn't have on anyway. Look it out. Right? So now when the man come tell you the truth and tell you no, you ain't all that. You can't be all that because you're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Ain't nothing fly about you. Wickedness is not fly. That's right. 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 So we want to find out why sisters like Jada and Double, what they call that, alopecia? Right? Ale 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 alopecia, you know? Let's find out why, read King. This is Isaiah chapter three and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. You see that? That's the majority of sisters that's walking up and down Peachtree Street. Now I might I might not be able to hear them, I mean see them, but I can hear them. But then these days I don't even know if that's a female no more, damn it, because you know what I'm saying? The men is wearing high heel shoes too. You know what I'm saying? They making the tinkling with their feet. Niggas walking around with goddamn ankle bracelets on and all that. You know what I'm saying? Read. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab, the crown, and of the head. Read that again. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab, the crown, of the head of the daughter of Zion. You see that? He said he's going to smite the crown of the head with the scab. That's where you get the alopecia from. That's where you get in the boredness from. It's a curse. Didn't I say I was going to tell you all about the curses? It's a curse. Right? But guess what? That curse is also a blessing. Because if you're living under these curses, you have the opportunity to repent. Right. You have the opportunity to get it right. Right? And if you're doing the right thing, you're going, you know what I'm saying? You're going to see, just like the most I said, your hair is your glory. Right? Read on. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. He gonna discover your secret parts. That's a double-edged thing right there. Yes, he's gonna discover your secret parts, meaning your physical secret parts that you don't want nobody to know about. And he also gonna hear about, he gonna know about all of those skeletons in your closet. Some of these sisters in the world got mausoleums in their closet. You know what I'm saying? And he's gonna discover all that, read on. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and call and their round tires like a moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnet and the ornaments of the legs and the hairbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits. Of the of apparel and the mantle and the whipple and the I always bring this out right here, right? When I when I when I when I bring out Isaiah 3 and 16, 
I always reminisce about when, when I was a little kid, right? And I used to go in my auntie room, or I'd go in grandmama room, and you know what I'm saying, the different, the way they used to have their closets and their dresses set up, right? When you open up their closets back in the, in, the, in, the, in the 70s, and the early 80s, man, and you open up our women's closets, our sisters' closets, it was beautiful. They had all type of dresses and skirts and shawls and, you know what I'm saying, all type of different shoes. And you look up on the top of the closet shelf and they got all type of different boxes with different type of hats in it and all of that stuff, bonnets and everything. Then you turn around, you go to the dresser. And you look on top of the dresser and they got not one bottle of perfume, but all types of different bottles of perfume that they can change up whenever they feel like it. They might have the plastic heads over there with like three and four different wigs, you know what I'm saying? And all of that, right? Now, sisters is lucky if they got five outfits, right? They go into the club with the outfit that they bought from the club, but they still got the tag on it so they can take it back, right? This is how low we fallen. You know what I'm saying? This is how low that our sisters have fallen because of these curses, right? But look at our sisters that's keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. They got all type of dresses with fringes on it. All type of skirts. All type of head wraps. And all of that. Looking beautiful. Right? You know what I'm saying? And that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? You can see the difference between these sisters that's still in the world under the curses and these sisters that's trying diligently to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and support the men of the Lord that's out here doing the work. Right? Matter of fact, the sisters that's out here, we respect you and we applaud you for coming out here to support us. Right. You know what I'm saying? We support you and we love you for doing so. Right? Because I've seen many of your videos before I came into the, into the truth. And I used to watch the videos and somebody always step up and be like, well, where your women at? Where's the, where your women at? Where's the representation of the women? There they go. They all around us right now. You understand? Read on. Verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. Mm -mm -mm. Instead of a sweet smell, there should be a stink. I ain't gonna go there. Y'all know what Girdle a ring. That's why a lot of women that's out there eating all that pork, lobster, shrimp, crab, you know what I'm saying? And they walking around and they got that gut. They got that gut because they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Y'all know how it is. Some women, they have them babies. It's a wrap after that. Yeah, be ready in turn, huh? Right? Because when they do have time to go really work out. You understand? Read. Yeah. And instead of well-said hair, baldness. See that? Instead of well-said hair, baldness. This comes from women being rebellious. This comes from them being haughty. You understand? So that's why we bring these scriptures out. Give me Isaiah 3 and 12. Right? You know. So we try to let you know how this goes. These are all of the curses that we are under. Right? You got that for me? Read. This is Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. Bring it up. As for my people, children are their oppressors. That's right. You don't see these children oppressing us? Right? Children are pressing. You know, they take up your time. Then when they get older, they in our neighborhood, shooting up our neighborhood, selling drugs everywhere. They don't have no respect for their elders. They don't even have respect for their own community. I remember it used to be a time when you getting ready to, when you see an elder person getting ready to cross the street, an elder woman, you would actually go walk with her, help her cross the street. Not no more. Niggas be like, ah, she can handle it. You know, help an old lady with her groceries, to carry her groceries. Do brothers do that anymore? No. You know, they open up the door, hold the door for a woman so she can walk through the door. Not no more. Now they can let the door close behind them, the woman to walk right into the door. You know, shit, that's all her. She opened the door herself. Or, it can also go the other way around. You hold the door for a woman, the woman be like, I can get it myself, nigga. You know what I'm saying? They don't even want chivalry no more. Right? So you know, it's, 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 it's a toss-up, read. And women 
rule over them. Over. And women rule over them. That's that 74% single mother households in our community that's raising up these damn demons. Raising up these drug dealers and these gangbangers. Right? Because sorry ass Pookie and Ray Ray didn't stay around to give little Pookie and Ray Ray some discipline. You understand? These are prophecies. Right? They which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. See, that's why we need more sisters like the sisters we got sitting out here with us. Because these sisters going to teach their children the Lord's statutes and commandments. They're going to bring their children up so that their children can inherit the kingdom. You understand? And that's what's important. Marriage is important. Staying in your children's life and teaching them the Lord's statutes and commandments and faith in Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai is important. This is what we're looking for. This is what I teach when I'm on Clubhouse. So if you happen to come on Clubhouse, and you come in my room or I come in your room and I rebuke you for going against the Lord's statutes and commandments and not telling you to get it together, don't blame me. Don't say that I hate women because I don't hate you. I'm doing what the Most High told me to do. And I don't care how you feel about it. I don't give a damn about your feelings because the Most High don't give a damn about your feelings. Give me that in Isaiah 58 and 1 and you let me get, um, yeah, let me get Isaiah 58 and 1. Right? And you give me Isaiah um, 30, yeah, Isaiah 30 and 10. Great. We're about to switch out, okay? So All right, I got, I got one more, one more script. Two more, two more. Two more. Two more. Get out. Give me that. This is Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 10. Bring it out. We say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. You hear that? They want smooth things. You give me Leviticus 19.17. This is what they want. They want smooth words. You'll be getting a whole bunch of smooth words. Keep Sweat gave you smooth words. Jagged Edge gave you smooth words. Babyface gave you smooth words. Babyface said he's going he to pay your rent. He's going to wash the clothes and the dishes. He's going to feed you as soon as he get home from work. Right? And the women, we've been hearing that so long that y'all can't take rebuke. Well, can't take correction. It sounds like somebody hates you simply because they're telling you how to save your life. What you got for me? You finished that out? Read. This is my last scripture. This is the reason why I say the things that I say to my sisters and I do what I do on the Man Up show. And, 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 and it's very important because it's a commandment from God. Read. This is Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. No, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. I can't hate you. It's not possible for me to hate you because I keep the commandments. I love the commandments. So I would never hate my sisters or my brothers. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Tell him, tell him smooth things. Rebuke thy neighbor. Pat him on the back. Rebuke thy neighbor. Take him to dinner. Rebuke thy neighbor. Have sex with him. Rebuke thy neighbor. Rebuke thy neighbor. That's a commandment. If you see your brother, your sister going off and you don't correct them and you don't tell them what the truth is, you are in sin. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Yeah, I had some messed up relationships in the past before, but I don't do that. I don't I don't correct my sisters because of that. Because, you know, that's one of the things they say. Oh, you must be mad at your mother. Who hurt you? <laughs> you know, ain't your mother black? <laughs> All of those things. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, just like Leviticus 19 and 17 said, it's about rebuking thy neighbor. When rebuke means to correct and not letting them suffer sin. Because what? The wages of sin is what, y'all? That's right. The wages of sin is death. And if you love your brother and your sister, you never want to see death come upon them. And for that reason, I rebuke and correct my brothers and my sisters, but mostly my sisters, because they need it the most. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
I am the Lord. And with that, I say Shalom. Shalom. Form Yashawan. Form Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. All praises, man. All praises. So yeah, the elder was telling the truth, man. You understand? We out here for our people, man. We out here for our nation. We trying to get our nation together, man. Our nation is done and destroyed. You understand, man? That's what we come out here for, man. The Most High said he was gonna he was gonna strengthen up some of the children of Israel to come out here, man, to sit up here, man, and, and bring this word out. And sit up here and edify our people, man. Because our people don't understand that they are special people, man. A very special people. Let me get um give me Isaiah 62 and 6. And you can give me um you understand, man? It, it, it is it is very time for our people to sit up here and wake up, man. You understand? And come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. There's a history book that speaks about only you, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians. Your schools are not going to teach you this. Your colleges that you go to to get your degree is not going to teach you this. The churches that's supposed to be sitting up here and, and especially sit up here and teach you this is not going to give you these words, man. They're not going to break this doctrine down, man. They're not going to break the history and, the, and the, the ethnicity and history of our people, man. So this is what we come out here for. Bring that out for me, Ken. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 62 and verse 6. Bring it out. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Who did the Most High say? I have set watchmen upon thy walls. O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. So we ain't out here to sit up here and be quiet. Day or night, rain, sleet, hail, or snow, we out here. And we're going to continue to keep doing this until the Most High tell us that it's time to close up shop. You understand? Continue on for me, King. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And that's what we're not here to do. We're not here to keep silent. We're going to keep mentioning this. We out here, this is my first time being out here in Atlanta. And this word is going to get out. You understand? Everywhere we at on this wicked kingdom, man, of the United States of America, which was real, the name, the real name was called the short before sitting up here being called America by this wicked white devil. You understand? So that's what we come out here for, man. We not out here, we not going to hesitate. We not going to sit up here. We not going to lead our people off. We not going to let them off the cliff to destruction. No, man, we're trying to pull you into this light and get you right. The pastors want your money. The teachers in all these other schools, they just want to sit up here and tell you that your, your history starts with slavery. But we're going to give it to you, thus say the Lord, out the Bible, or who our people were way before slavery was even encountered, and the reason why our people fell into slavery. Bring that out for me, King. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words in my mouth and give them warning from me. So that's what we out here to do. We out here to warn our people. We out here to give you that strong rebuke. We not going to give you that secret love. We going to give you that strong rebuke. We going to tell you to get off of weed. We going to tell you to stop smoking crack. We going to tell you to stop game banging. We going to tell you to stop shooting your, and, and killing your people, man, Lord. over blocks, over materialistic things that have nothing to do with the history of yourself, man. We letting our sisters know to dress in modest in apparel. Stop with all this sexiness, man, because that's not going to get you by in these last days. You understand? You brothers and you brothers out here shooting each other over over colors. And mind you, the colors that you representing, that you killing each other, is on the same flag that our people's blood is still soaked into this very day, man. You understand, man? It's time for our people to wake up and and sit up here and know who they are according to the Bible. Continue for me, King. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will require in thine hand. So for us to have this beautiful spirit by the Most High, man, to sit up here, man, and, and clean up ourselves, 
strengthen up ourselves and sit up here and edify our people. If we're not letting you know of who you are according to the Bible and telling you to give up your wicked ways, man, when you die from that same judgment of the Most High because you didn't want to change, man, that blood now stays on our hands. We could be put to death the same way because we didn't sit up here and warn you and we had the knowledge and wisdom and understanding to sit up here and give that to you. You understand? Continue for me, Kate. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou shalt, slack you, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So we're going to deliver our soul. You understand? We don't want to stay in this wicked kingdom, man. You understand? I don't want to be put to death, man. None of these brothers up here, man, none of these sisters, we don't want to be put to death. That's right. You understand? We want everlasting life. Right. That's why we getting down for our crown, man. You understand, man? So if we sitting up here and we letting you know to rebuke from these wickedness that you're doing, man, that society is teaching you that it's all right to do, that are passing laws to say that's all right for you to do, but it's not going against, I say the Lord, it's not going against your house's words. You understand? It's not going against your house's words. You understand? If you still continue in your wickedness, you understand, we let you know. You can't say that we didn't let you know in that last day, man. When the wickedness really starts coming down, you can't say that we didn't warn you. You understand? Now the blood is off our hands. Now Jay-Z sits here and says, brush your, brush your shoulders off. Well, guess what? We wiping our hands off with your blood. You understand? And we out here diligently and strong because we love our people. You understand? We've been through the same era. We come from the same cloth, man. You understand? We was once out here in the streets doing the same wickedness, man. Doing the same foulness, man doing the same to each other. Not to the real enemy, but we doing it to each other. You understand? It's time for our people to sit up here and wake up. Give me Colossians 3 and 8, okay? Your pastors are not going to sit up here. They're not going to give you the right teachings, man. You understand, man? You in the church right now. You brothers and sisters that's walking by right now. You in the church. You in the church right now. There's no reason for you to go to church tomorrow, man. You understand? They lying to you, man, about these or, or what these churches are sitting up here doing. Let me get, um, give me, um, give me Isaiah 30 and 9. You understand? These churches, man, these wicked pastors, man, they, they, they telling you totally off. You understand? They're even letting Edomites, man, the, the, the devils that the Bible speak of, to sit up here, man, and try to teach our people the word. You understand? You got Joel Osteen sitting up here, man, trying to teach you the, the, the doctrines of the, of the Most High, but yet he's the devil that the Bible speak of. Meanwhile, there's over six, what? There was over 500,000 that they found in this man's, uh, in, in his churches, buried in the damn walls. You understand? And meanwhile, this is the man who's teaching you righteousness. You gotta be out your mind. It's time for our people to wake up, man. Hosea 4 and 6, our people are destroyed because you don't want to read a damn book, man. You don't want to open up the book and see it for yourself. No, you expect that you you expect these teachers that ain't teaching you right to sit up here, man, and give you the and, and give you the instructions. Don't want to see it for yourself. You understand? So it's time for our people to really wake up, man. Like I said, we was once just like that. Wicked and evil as hell, man. You understand, man? But it's time for us to wake up, man, and come at the real enemy. Stop being stop being the tin man for for your own. But then when it comes down to you to the real enemy, you don't have that heart. Stop being like the scarecrow that when it comes down to your brothers and sisters, you don't need no brain. But when it comes to your enemy, now you're looking for that damn brain. You like the damn lion, man. That sit up here, man, and you 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 roaring mighty and raw, mighty and loud when it comes down to your brothers and sisters and wickedness, man, of going at each other. But like I said, man, when it comes down to this white man and the rest of these nations, now you like that damn lion that lost his courage, man. You don't got no courage at all, man. No courage at all, man. So we trying to, we, we, we out here, man. And like I said, we're going to continue to keep doing this until the Most High sit up here, man, and say it's time to close shop, man. Bring that out for me, King. It's the book of Colossians, chapter 3, and verse, uh, verse 8. But now ye also put up all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Oh, that's what we out here doing now, man. We used to be like that, man. We was disrespectful to our sisters. We was disrespectful to ourselves. 
to your own brothers, to your parents, man, your grandmothers, your aunts, your uncles. You understand? We was just messed up all the way. You understand, man? Messed up all the way. And it's time for our people to wake up on that. Continue, King. Verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Look at these mighty beautiful brothers out here, man. Look at the beautiful elders, man, that done opened the door for us, man. You understand? Look at these mighty men out here. Mighty and beautiful, man. You know what I'm saying? I've never been around brothers like this. I've never been around brothers like this, man. And you don't know how beautiful it feels to sit up here, man, and be around brothers and sisters like this, man. That really love each other, man. That really have respect for one another, man. That really know how to take care of situations when it's getting ready to go downhill. You understand? And like I said, these pastors, they supposed to be giving you this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But they don't want to give that to you, man. Like I said, they sell you out for a damn plane. They sell you out for a jet. They sell you out for all these things, man. You tell our, we rebuke our people, man. It, it, it becomes, you know, it's, it, it's like you slap them. It's like you punch them in the chest or something. You understand? They don't like when you tell the truth, man. But then when you sit up here and you just tell them the basics of what they want to hear, they go along right, they go along right along with it. Bring this out for me, thank you. Isaiah 30 and 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, ch children that will not hear the law of the Lord. They don't want to hear the laws of the Lord. They want they don't want to hear nothing from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation through the Apophrica. They don't want to hear nothing about these laws, statutes, and commandments. Continue for me, Kate. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us, so like you prophesy not unto us right things. Speak of they don't want to they don't want to give you the right doctrine out of this Bible. They don't want you to see in the right path, man, or where you need to be going. Thus say the Lord, man. Continue for me, Kate. Speak unto us smooth things. No, our people just love smooth words, man. They don't like to hear this real rebuke, man. You understand? They don't like to hear none of this at all. So it's time for our people to sit up here and wake up, man. Time to really sit up here, man, and get yourself together, man. Because when martial law hits, man, when this white man is finally sit up here, man, and say, you know what, man, I got to put this rap even harder, man. Trust me, man, a lot of our people, man, is not going to feel that. But like I said before, we're going to become your celebrities in that last day, man. We're going to be all your, your sports figures. We're going to be all your entertainers. We're going to be all your R&B artists and your rap stars in that last day, man. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it down to the next dynamic speaker, man. All praises, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of HOI, man to the beautiful brothers and sisters that are in this truth. Ten toes down consistently and diligently, man. Death and destruction to this wicked ass place. Death and destruction to all these nations, man, including the white man himself, man. And like I said, boom ya Shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. So the world, so the world, man. Hey, we see it all throughout the globe, man, that our people are getting killed, man. All right? We tired of seeing that, man. That's why we got to come back to our God, because he's our God alone, man. All right? This is Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 25. Look at that. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. To be what? To be smitten before thine enemies. <laughs> so the Lord said that he was going to allow our, our enemies to get the upper hand on us, man. That's why we need to come back to the Most High God, man. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. So, you know, if you in the hood, you know when 12 come, man, everybody hopping fences, man. 
All right? The Lord said that he that we will go out against him one way and flee away from him seven ways, man. And shall be removed into all the kingdom of the earth. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And we'll be scattered, man. Right? So we was going to be scattered and we was going to be subject to our enemies, man. That's a curse that's on our people. And we see that all too often, man. Zechariah 11 and verse 5. Right. Who, who possesses slander? Right. And hold themselves not, not guilty. So the Lord told us to feed. You know, we got song, man. The Lord told us to feed the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them. And, what? and hold themselves not guilty. Right. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. Hey, so the people who kill us and hold themselves not guilty are also the people who sold us, man. They say, Blessed be the Lord, I'm rich, man. That's why we need to come back to the Lord, man. Give me Ezra chapter 4. Right? Bring it up! And their own shepherds pity them not. Hey, and the people that, that thought that they was leading us, man, they don't even care, man. Right. Right? They, they don't even consider about what we're going through, man. Right. Right? It's just another day in the life of being a nigga in America. Today, right. man, that's what we concerned right? Bring it up! God. This is Ezra, chapter 4, and verse 3. Bring it up. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us. Ye have nothing to do with us. Ye have nothing to do with us. With the Lord our God, man. Read that again. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel <laughs> Of Israel, of Israel. So these are the chief of the fathers of Israel, man. That's our nation, man. This is the best kept secret in the world that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true Israelites, according to the Bible, man. Said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us. Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. They said that this is our God, man. All right. He said, you ain't got nothing to do with us to build to our God, man. The God of the Bible is only for the Israelites, man. And for none else, man. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel. That's why we got to come together as the nation not desired, man. All right? The Lord is not playing with us, man. Now, all throughout the Bible, you will hear about all of the things that we go through as a nation. All right? No other nation went into slavery on ships except for the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, man, who are the Israelites, man. We got to learn that the Lord is not playing with us in these last days, especially now. All right? When all hell's going to break loose, man. Right. Get out, King. Hey, in these last days, man, it's gonna get real hectic, man. But it's gonna be a beautiful day to be an Israelite, man. Come on. Right? Come on. Come on. Hey, it's a beautiful day to be an Israelite, man. All right, we we see in the fall of a wicked ass nation, man. All right, the people that took us and our ancestors into captivity and still got us into captivity to this day, man. This this Proverbs chapter one and verse twenty six. Twenty four. Verse 24, because I have called and ye refused. Ye what? Ye refused. So he called and we refused, man. We are hard-headed ass people, man. We don't never want to do what the Bible say. We don't even want to crack it open, man. And that's our damn problem, man. All right? That's why we're going to continue being in this little state, man. All right? I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. it. But ye have said at night. All my counsel. So you rejected all of his counsel, man. He stretched out his hand towards you. You rejected him, man. Who are you to slap the Lord's hand down when he reaching out to you? All right? We got a damn problem as a nation. It's like we always want to have this getting out the mud spirit. I'm tired of getting it out the mud, man. All right? I want to be at the top. I want to be the top nation.
26. And we're none of my repute, verse 26. I also, Salaki, I also will calamity. I will laugh at the calamity. So the Lord gonna have the last laugh, man. All right, because y'all didn't want to listen. He gonna have the last laugh, and during the time of your calamity, he gonna be busting out laughing, man. All right. I will mock when your fear cometh. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation. As what? As desolation. As desolation. So when uh, when hell's breaking loose and Putin dropped them damn nukes on America, man, y'all gonna be caught lacking because y'all don't want to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Alright? Y'all gonna be caught lacking and he gonna mock you, man. He gonna mock you in this thing. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. As a world, so that thing is gonna be hectic, man. It's not gonna be a sweet time, man, in America, man. America, Babylon finna fall, man. All right, it's finna fall real quick, man. It's already on the downfall. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon you. Hey, so now you gonna try to call upon God, man? But y'all been ignoring him this whole damn time. People walking up and down these streets, gay as hell out here, man. Man, in this LGBT, a QRS, HIV crew, man. All right? The Lord not dealing with that, man. Right. All right? So when the time of the calamity is done, all right, he not going to deal with you, and y'all going to be crying unto him. This shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. But I will not answer. So you going to call on him, and he will not what? But I will not answer. Hey, so if you're not following, if you're not, if, look, if you're not hooking into the voice of the Lord, Man, now, the way the time of discussion comes, he not gonna listen to you, man. Man, that's some weak ass music, man. All right, I'm just saying, man. All right, I've been hearing some weak ass music all up and down Atlanta, man. But the, but the, that's the Mighty Cyrus track, huh? Yeah, that's that Mighty Cyrus track, man. Hey, the Lord not dealing with that, man. He want to sing. Hey, we gonna sing a new song. We're not gonna sing the tune of being saved out of Egypt again. We're gonna be singing the tune of being saved out the land of the north. Just like Jeremiah said, man. But they, lucky. they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So they're gonna seek, hey, they're gonna try to seek them, but you're not gonna be able to find them, man. You got the men of the Lord out here in, in, in beautiful apparel, man, trying to give y'all this word and give y'all the truth of the Bible. But y'all gonna go. To early, early, look, today, wait, Sunday service, man, to learn about white Jesus, man, all right, which he didn't even, he didn't raise on, on no Sunday, man, all right, that's all folly, man, Habakkuk chapter 2, man, because these, hey, he said they did a number on our people, man, all right, this so-called white man that did a number on our people, yeah, this is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5. Bring it out. Ye also, because he transgressed by wine. By wine. So all of these these doctrines and philosophies, he transgresses by wine. He is a proud man. And who's more proud than the damn white man, man? Right. Neither keepeth at home. He don't mind his damn business. You got him all up in our book. Man, because he don't got no God, man. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. Who de enlargeth his desire as hell. And now he got embassies all around the world. Hey, giving hell to all of the Israelites, man. To the blacks and Spanish, native and Sem Seminole Indians, man. And is as death. What? As death, what? as death. Hey, so, hey, this white man kills and destroys everything that he gets his hands on, everything that his eye sees, man. And cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations. He gather what? Gather unto him all nations. So he gathered unto him all the nations of Israel, and heapeth unto him all people. And heapeth unto him all people. Hey, so he heapeth unto him all people. So now he got all the other nations, which are not Israelites, under his subjection, man. All right? 
Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourself together. Gather yourself together. Ye gather together. O nation not desire. Hey, so the Lord told us to gather together, O nation not desire. Man, in, God. in every state, man, hey, we are the least right. We are the most hated, man. All right, he told us to gather together, O nation not desire. Man. Like, in the, uh, Psalms chapter 83. Hey, the Lord told us all the nations that was against us, man. All right? This is Psalms chapter 83 and verse 2. Right For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, right. and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Hey, so all of these nations, they went behind our back and took crafty counsel against us, man. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. They said what? And let us cut them off for big and Hey, that was the plan all along, man, to cut this to cut Israel out, man. To split them up, man, and use an abuser. That the name of Israel lucky. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So that we will remember the name Yasha Allah, man. Alright? So that we don't know that we the princes of the power with God, man. Okay, For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate at this. So they all came together and consulted with one consent and to be confederate against us. To be heavily against us, man. That we won't be a nation. The tabernacles of Edom, the white man, and the Ishmaelites, the, the, the Muslim people, of Moab, the Chinese people, and the Hagarines, Gabal, and Ammon. And Amalek. Hey, and that's the damn Jewish man that's pretending to be us in our land, man. And the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher, Syria, also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. So all the, the Moabs and the Ammonites are with them. The Japanese and the Chinese are with them. All, all to keep these niggas and speak so-called white right, out of power, man. And with that, I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shalom Asiago Malak Al-Shan. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Somebody got to stay up. So, we come out here, man. We come out here to show our people how they know man. Our people that we love and to come back to the most high. Y'all want to ask that brother a question? the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. No! Cry aloud! Spin not! He said, What? Cry aloud! Spin not! Right? The most high said, Come out and cry aloud and spin not, man. Right? We gotta come out here and we gotta show our people what they're doing wrong, man. And we can't, we don't take heed to how y'all feel about the correction, man. Whether you like it or not, the most high gave us a job to do, and we come out here to do it. Right? Uh, and we're gonna find out what our job is when we come out here. Lift up my voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Do what? Lift up that voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Forgive this sin. Their transgression. Look over this sin. 
Right. We gotta show our people their transgressions. Man. Get it up! I mean, we gotta judge you and show you how you're breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. That's right. right! We gotta come out here and show you that you're breaking the Sabbath day, man. Bring it out, we dog! We gotta rebuke it, because the Most High told us to, man. That's right. our job, right? Like we say in the world, man, I'm my brother's keeper. That's right! right? I love my brother, I'm going to show him how he's going on, man. I'm not going to watch my brother walk down the path of destruction, man. Right? The Most High told us that the wages of sin is death. Right? So if I see my brother walking in sin, I got to rebuke him, man. I got to tell him to go the other way, man. Right? I'm not going to let my brother just walk out in the middle of Peach Street, man. In heavy traffic. Right? If I love my brother, I'm going to correct him and I'm going to watch over him, man. That's right. That's what we do as a people, man. That's right. The High told us what? He sent us to be watchmen. That's right. right? Watchmen over the house of Israel, man. That's right, King. Right? So we come out here and watch over our people, man. Bring it out. Whether y'all like it or not, we got a job to do, man. We don't care if you want us to watch over y'all or not. We That's still right. got to do it, man. That's right. Because y'all... Y'all's blood is going to be our hands if we don't let y'all know, man. Right? So we come out here to get the blood off our hands and to show y'all that we love y'all, man. Right? Because if we don't do it, ain't nobody else going to do it. Man. That's right. The reason they going to tell you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Right? You blacks, you Native Americans, and you Hispanics, we got to start loving each other, man. Stop, stop waiting on the white man to love you because he's not going to do it, man. Satan don't love righteousness, man. That's right, dude. right. The most high loves right righteousness. We as his people, we gotta love righteousness too, man. Oh, right? Man. You can put your... This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter mm. three, verse seventeen. No. Son of man, I have made thee watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth. And get the warning from me. Do what? Get the warning from me. Let them walk by. Give the warning from me. Turn, turn, turn the blind eye. Give the warning from me. Right, so we come out here to warn our people about the things that they're doing, man. That's right. right? And how they're walking, in, they walking into death, man. Walking into a, a life of destruction, right? What I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest toward the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die his iniquity. So the, the most high, when you commit sin, right, the wages of sin is death. That's right. Right? And the Most High is going to repay you that, man. That's right, what you, Whatever you reap, that's what you're going to, what, whatever you sow, you're going to reap, man. So if you reap sin, you, you're going to get that, right? But his blood, what I require at thy hand. You're going to die, but the blood is going to be on our, our hands because we didn't warn you, man. That's right. We didn't tell you we were our brother's keeper. Right? Just like Cain and Abel, man. Right? So we come out here to warn our people. Right? See, the problem with us committing sin is, man, we under all these curses, man. And every day our people talking about we want to break generational curses. Yeah, you don't know how the curse got put on you, man. How you gonna break the curse and you don't know who put it on you and you don't know why they put it on you, man. Right? So that's something we gotta figure out because these curses not gonna tell you how to get the curses off you, man. Right? They tell you how to put yourself under the curse. They tell you not to keep the law of that Jesus command. Right? Give me what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. To do what? 
All his commandments. Read. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day. That all these curses. All these what? All these curses. Shall come upon thee. And overtake thee. Turn. So the most I said. If we don't listen to him. Lord, that's just the best of all. That all these curses shall be upon us and overtake us. Right? This is why we are a cursed people today. This is why you have to break generational curses. Whether you're in the truth or not. We break a generational curses, man. Right? We're trying to put the fathers back in the home, man. Right? We're trying to stop killing our brothers and sisters, man. Right? All that black on black crime, we gotta stop that, man. Get up. We're not each other, man. You don't rob your brother before you rob the people that rob you. Right. You ain't gonna rob the white man. You scared to rob the white man, but the white man ain't scared to rob you. That's right. He stole everything from you, man. He stole your heritage. He stole your life. He done stole your women. He done stole your mind. You don't got nothing to yourself no more, man. Right. He own you. But let your brother steal some dollars from, from you, you want to go kill him. Right. Use that same energy and go kill him. Right. But you're scared to do that, man. You're scared to rise up against your oppressors, man. <clears throat> so guess what? The Most High had to send us out of here to wake y'all up. We got to wake y'all up and get y'all back on one accord. Right? We're we'll talking to your people, show you how to love your people again, man. Give you your mind back. We're going to give you your heritage back, man. We as a nation, we can't unite and rise up against our oppressors, and you don't even know who you are, man. You don't even know who your enemy is, man. You still fighting your own family on a day-to-day -day basis, man. Right. Bring it out. You and, you and your wife are at war. The wife and the kids is at war. That's right. You at war with the brothers. The man you supposed to go out to battle with, right? Don't supposed to be side by side in battle against your oppressor. You got an evil eye towards him, man. How did that work, man? As the scriptures say, a house divided against itself cannot stand, man. We can't stand divided against one another, man. We gotta come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. This has to be our foundation. This gotta be our foundation, man. And this is what we unite on when we build our nation on this, man. But our people don't wanna hear this message, man. Our people don't wanna hear that, man. Our people will sit there all day long, talk about unity, but then we brothers get out here on these streets and we talk about unity. Nobody want to listen, man. Right. Nobody want to listen. Y'all shame us for loving y'all, man. You be mad because your brother love you? You rather me hate you? That's what you want? You rather me look at you with an evil eye and think about how to kill you? Right. Think about how to rob you? That's what you want? Because that's how we act, man. We say one thing, but we act a totally different way, man. Brothers cry all day because they ain't love, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't got no loyalty, man. But that's what we out here trying to teach people, is how to be loyal. Right? And not be loyal to everybody on the earth, but be loyal to your own people, man. That's what God wants. That's what the Most High is asking you to do. He's not asking you to be loyal to everybody on the earth, man. He's asking you to first start with your own family. Be loyal to your people, man. And y'all can't even do that. Yeah, you wonder why your people get killed in the middle of the street, man. Why these heathens is able to sit on your neck and shoot you in cold blood and nothing happens, man. You won't even do that to your own. You won't even do no shit, man. Give me, uh, what you got? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. So that the man that is to among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. We got an evil eye towards our brothers, man. That's the curse that we're trying to break, man. 
right? That's the curse that we trying to break. Right? We gotta stop the black on black violence, man. And how we do that is coming back to these law statutes and commandments, man. Right? You shouldn't be plotting on how to steal from your brother, man, just because he got more than you. Ask that brother how he did it, man. Right. And if a brother come to you, ask you how you did it, you tell him, man. Right. Freely we receive, freely we give, man. This knowledge is to be told, not sold. And that's why we come out here to tell people free of charge, man. We don't come out here with collection plates, begging people with no money, man. Like these Christian church churches. We donate to ourselves to come out here and teach these people, man. Because we love our people, man. We could be at work, working on the Sabbath day, man. A lot of us have got fired because we don't want to work on the Sabbath day, man. Right? We have lost jobs. Lost houses. Lost, we have lost a lot of our lives, man. To come out here and teach our people, man. Right? We do that for y'all. We don't do this for ourselves, man. We could be doing the same thing y'all do. We could be out having a good time just like y'all. But instead, we choose righteousness, man. We choose life over death. Right? We as men of the Lord, that's what we called to do, man. You called to lead your people to the way of life, man. Right? Stop leading your people into a way of death, man. Yeah, you want to call it and say you love your people, man. Then blast me, man. You fake his hair, you sit up and you tell the brother you love him, but you watch him do something that's in his life, man. You watch him do something, you support him doing something that's going to get him life in prison, man. He'll never see his kids again. That's what you want for your brother? We got to stop this foolishness, man. We got to come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Right? We got to repent as a people, man. Give me a uh, repent. Yeah, yeah, fine. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. The most high said what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Come on, so one of the laws the most high told us to do is to keep the Sabbath day, man. From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. We got to keep the Sabbath day holy, man. Right? That's the day we're not supposed to buy or sell anything, man. The Most High gave us a day just to rest, right? But our people don't want, even want to do that, man. That's the easy way that you can show love to your brother, man. Get back on track with the Most High, man. Start repenting, right? So that you can come from under these curses, man. Right? Okay, fine. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3. Verse 19, repent ye therefore. Do what? Repent ye therefore. Right, the man's high said repent, man. Means when he change your ways, man. Change your mind. You got to stop thinking with this carnal mind, man. Stop thinking fleshly thoughts, man. Stop thinking of ways to rob your people, man. How to get over on your people, man. Right? Ways to kill your people, man. You got to stop that, man. It ain't nothing wrong with loving your people, man. That takes strength to do the right thing, man. Our people are so quick to do the wrong thing because it's easy, man. Right? But real men take the harder route, man. And they're going to do what needs to be done, man. And that's building our nation up and getting back to the top where the most high put us, man. Right? We picked it there for. And be converted. Be converted, man. Right? Convert your life into righteousness, man. Stop living in a life of sin. Stop stealing, stop killing, stop committing adultery. Right? Stop worshiping these idols, these celebrities. Right? The only one you should be worshiping is the most high Yahweh Shah. Is the most high in Yahweh Shah man. All right. That your sins may be blotted out. 
What? That your sins may be blotted out. If you repent, the most high will blot out your past sins, man. You'll be forgiven, man. Right? The most high will look over all that stuff, man. He still deems you to be worthy to be forgiven, man. You just gotta take the proper actions and do it, man. You just gotta repent and change your ways, man. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. He ain't asking you much. He ain't asking you to pay for it. You don't have to buy your salvation. Just repent, man. Turn on, stop hating your brother and love your brother. That's all he asks for. Right. Right? Is that right? When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Come. And with that, I just want to say, Quan Yasurah. Quan Yasurah. Quan Yasurah. Quan Yasurah. Quan Wow, Shalom, Israel. Hey, Most High say he know our works and he know our tribulations. Every day we labor. Even though we come out here in season, out of season, right? Do this work for the Most Lord. He see us. And he got something waiting on us that endure to the end, right? We do this not for nothing. We do this for the kingdom. Right. right? We do this to reverence of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Because he left us an uh, example of how we should walk in this wicked kingdom. How we can overcome it. Right? And earn that place in the kingdom. He also know the works of these wicked ass Israelites that's running around him. Who act like they don't want to hear his word. Because they got itchy ears. Right? They want to run around here and choose who they want to... Uh, hold in high regards. Everything that's got to do with the opposite of what the Most High tell them. Because this world got a hold on our people. Right? They want to hear the precept of man. Do as thou wilt. The damn uh, Alistair Crowley spirit. Okay? That devil worshiping. That's why our women walk around out here half dressed. Right? Our men running around out here trying to uh, overtake the woman's position. You uh, know, First Peter 4, 11, and Isaiah 82. They gonna get this work, whether they wanna hear it or not. Right. But in the book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Hey, we ain't out here just damn freestyling off the top of the head saying no anything out of our mouth. We diligently search out the mysteries of this Bible. We do our diligent inquisition and we cross-reference, all right? Biblical facts, historical facts, archeological facts, sometimes geographical facts, so that we can come out here and present this word to y'all in truth and sincerity, right? Because the Most High tells us to do what? Study to show thyself approved. And when we do that, we speak with the oracles of the God, right? Abba Nawi Yahweh. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God given. Hey, when we teaching this truth, we doing it with the ability that the Most High gave to us. Right. You're going to hear a plethora of brothers bringing it out. And you're going to hear it in all different manners. Every last brother that spit this word on the Most High, the Most High Spirit dwells within that brother. We set out here to reach a mass of people of all different spiritual types. This is why brothers bring it out in their own type of ways, all right? Because everybody not gonna hearken to that brother that's got that aggressive spirit. Everybody not gonna hearken to that soft-spoken brother. Because our people is hard-headed and stiff-necked. And sometimes you gotta grab them by the damn throat and pull the medicine down their throat and make them swallow it. That God and all things may be glorified through your house shop. Christ to one be praised and dominion forever and never. We do this to give glory to Yahweh Shai, right? Our Hamashiach, the one who left the example. He beat this place. And he also gave his life so that we could be out here doing what we're doing right now. Earning our place in the kingdom. Not to be out here in all manner of wickedness. Right? Our women want to be damn thoughts, pole dancers, okay? Our men want to be damn uh, Al Capone shooting up every damn thing. 
killing off the Lord's army. Right. Instead of brothers coming together, securing our communities, securing our women, securing our children, all right? Understanding that we are a nation. And every time these wicked ass heathen put their hands on one of us, we supposed to go to war. But we can't go to war because we don't see each other as brothers. We don't see each other as the same nation. Our people out here cleaving to these wicked, dusty ass goddamn Edomites, all right? Right. Want to lay down with them, have babies with them, talk about they they damn friends. Behind they back, you all matter of niggas. Look at them, walk through here like goddamn it, they own the place. But y'all ass going into slavery. I need y'all to know that for the rape, rob, and murder, and everything that y'all have done to the blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. And I know what you over there saying. You ain't done it personally, because you got one token Negro as a friend. But you living off of the uh, hard sweat, blood, and tears of our ancestors. That's right. That's right. Y'all ass gonna pay for it. This is Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Bring it out. the love and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Hey man, we don't speak darkness. We speak light. We speak that light of the Most High that's gonna lighten your way. We walk in that. That's why you see all these brothers and sisters out here with fringes on, all right? That's why you see us out here keeping the Shabbat like we supposed to, because we letting our light shine as an example to all of y'all weak ass Israelites out here who claim that it's too hard. You men better gird your damn selves up, and you women better get in subjection and come out of those pants and get that manly spirit off your ass for your house shot crack the sky and cut your neck from your body. John. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Hey, if we were standing up here talking folly, most high have us on that death list. All right? We don't worry about Hasatan and his damn minions. Because we speak the oracles of the Most High. But y'all come stand in front of prophets of the Lord when we trying to give you salvation unto life eternal life and you want to tell us about what your damn pastor pork chop told you you want to tell us what td snakes and creep for a dollar then told your ass that you can just sin do all whatever you want and the lord still love you he's the god of everybody and the bible don't say that right he's the god of the blacks latinos native americans right. the children of israel right. and he's the soon to be murderer of all the rest of you wicked ass bastards That's right. <laughs> Right. And his lips or the snare of his soul. Hey, talking out the side of your ass. Get you put in a trap that you ain't going to be able to get out of on Judgment Day. Right. You're going to be up there trying to say it wasn't me. I didn't know. Most high going to pull out that world TV and rewind it back, you was shot. <laughs> ain't that your wicked ass right there? Right. Disrespecting my prophets. Right. Walking on up down the street like you don't hear them trying to warn you. Get your ass over there in that lake of fire. Tell them out. You gonna be on that barbecue list. That's right. Right? And you the damn meal. Crime. Understand that. Come on, that thing. This is chapter 2, and verse 1. Therefore, the Lord hath made good his word, which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judge Israel. Hey. The most high made good. You keep them law, statutes, and commandments, man. Ain't none of the pestilences of uh, the curses from Egypt don't come near us. We talk about that damn pandemic, COVID. Hey, man, Israel wasn't walking around here with masks on our face. We wasn't catching COVID. We wasn't dying from none of that stuff. All the rest of these damn wicked ass bastards around us was filling up the cemeteries. Why? Because they weren't keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. They weren't protected with the armor of the most high. They don't know the law, statutes, and commandments. They Not only do they not know them, they don't even consider or want to hear them. They want the Proverbs and they want the uh, Salakia. They want the precepts of man. And against our king, and against our priests, and against the man of Israel and Judah. The Lord said we was a nation of kings and priests, prince and princesses. And these wicked bastards speak all manner of disrespect about us. That's right. Okay? Every chance they get. Oh, the blacks, 
They're aggressive. They're angry. They're animals. We was watching in the class one day with a damn stinking ass Edomite girl uh, caught a murder or something, and they're going to tell her that she's going to be charged with the worst crime that they can ever charge her with, and that's to be charged as a black man. <laughs> okay? But we know why we go through this. That's why there's no sweat uh, off our eyebrows. We hear what the Most High tells us. Right? right? Deuteronomy 30, what it tell you? Keep the law, statutes, and commandments and live or die. Because I put before you this day life and death. Right. We chose to live. So we don't give no damn about those of y'all who have the same choice and you choose to do the opposite. When the Most High puts your ass to death, good riddance. All right? All right? Romans 10 and 1. I wish that all Israel be saved, but it ain't gonna happen. Two thirds of y'all gonna die. And our job is not to tell you that, but I'm gonna keep it one thousand while with you, baby. If you run around this boy and you acting two third ish, you might be two thirds. All right? You ain't keeping no damn commandments. You run around here, ain't keeping the feast days and the high holy days. All right? You celebrating all these pagan ass holidays. You blaspheming in the name of the Most High and His Son by bowing down to that crusty ass Edomite, Caesar Borgia, who's a flaming homosexual, a pedophile, and a damn murderer, and that's who y'all choose to name the uh, Most High Son after? Bring it you out. dusty, disgusting bastards. Bring it up, man. This is Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the love that it done forever. Hey, the law ain't done away with. Contrary to what your crusty ass pastor keep telling you with his 501c3. All right? Pro pro that prevents him from being able to teach this book in its authenticity. You've been in church 30 years and he ain't never told you that those Israelites that he reading about was you. You go to church on Passover, he profane the, the damn Passover by giving you some Welch's grape juice and a damn cardboard cookie to eat, talking about that's the body and the blood of your house shot. Wicked as hell. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. All those that keep these laws, statutes, and commandments shall be what? All they that keep it shall come to life. Shall come to life. All right? Because you're walking around out here spiritually damn dead. All right? Valley of dry bones. And we know that these laws, statutes, and commandments is spiritual water. All right? That's that rehydration. It's going to bring you back to life. You're going to keep them commandments and you're going to get them eyes to see with them ears to hear with, right? That spiritual gift of discernment. Right. Bring out. Such as leave it shall die. And all y'all that turn your back on the most high of the Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai, your ass deserve death. Okay? Right. Our Messiah gave his life for us. And this is how y'all repay him? Y'all want to be faggots? You want to be homosexual lesbians, all right? You want to kill off your brothers and sisters. You want to, you want to uh, not be at home and take care of your family. You don't want to work. You want to stand on a damn corner and panhandle and beg, take all type of damn drugs, and you wonder why you got damn diabetes, right. got high blood pressure. You're leading number one in all type of damn pestilence, HIV, okay? High cholesterol. Wonder why the damn police gunning you down every chance you get. You're now protected by the most high. Right. You pray every damn night according to your pastor's rules and your prayer ain't been answered yet. And when you go to him and tell him, I sow the seed, my prayer ain't been answered, he tell your ass you ain't praying hard enough and you don't believe enough. Okay? We can talk till we blue in the face. You're never gonna believe or understand what we know until you keep these law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Polu, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 35. Be yeah, willing to come hear come on, come on. every godly discourse. You all right? Come on. And let not the parables right of understanding escape thee. Hey, be willing to hear every godly discourse. 
When the prophets of the Lord is out here bringing out these law, statutes, and commandments, these dark parables, all right, these mysteries in the Bible, you should be willing to hear this. I mean, me personally, if I claim to love the Most High God and somebody is talking about Him, I want to know what you know about Him so that I can compare it with what I know. All right? That's how you make it plain up on tables. But when you walk around here and you talk, oh, I'm, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I got a personal relationship with the Lord, the Lord know my heart, you talking that pre-programmed uh, brainwashed doctrine of Christianity. Okay? What's happening, King? You got a question? <laughs> you know you're an Israelite? What's your father? What's your nationality? African American. Right? You do understand that's two different continents, right? And I, you probably don't know, but you know that's named after two white men, right? See, one is named after Scipio uh, uh, Africanos, Africanos yeah. right? And the other one is Amerigo Vespucci, right? Africanos, he won the Second Punic Wars against our Israelite brother Hannibal Barker, right? And he conquered that land and named it after himself, right? And when you look at uh, Amerigo Vespucci, Italian map maker, stenographer, all right? That's who America was named after. So you can't come from two white men and seeing that those are two continents going in the opposite direction of each other, your nationality is your place of origin, right? Your bloodline that you belong to, you can't come from both those places, all right? So we got the sign out here anywhere? Yeah, right here, come over here. right here. Look at this sign, okay? Yeah. What sign, on, who you identify as on this sign? The name at the top is what the Most High God calls you. The name under it is what the white man calls you in slavery. So you from the tribe of Judah. You be from the same tribe that Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ to be from. All right? So that makes you an Israelite, brother. All right? You're not a black man the color of a crayon. All right? So as an Israelite, brother, there's some things that you got to understand about being an Israelite. It's a requirement. Right? It's not all the fancy doodads you see the brothers up here laced out in, right? It ain't about all the hooping and hollering, man. You got some requirements. Drop all that, I just uh, 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 just give, 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 give me five minutes, seven or six. Give me five minutes, okay? Yeah, just, just listen to this. Trust me, listen to it, okay? Bring it out! This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out! For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Most High, Abba Nahu Yahweh said that the Israelites, all right, are special people unto himself. All right? For the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose you to be a special people. Drop that, get, um, seven of he chose the Israelites to be a special people because we understand that there were 18 nations created in the Bible, okay? And out of those 18 nations, he chose one to be his own nation, all right? And that would happen to be the so-called Blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, all right? And as he reading in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, the Most High God said that those people are special people unto himself, all right? Now, hold on, select me. Now, we understand that word. God. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Let's establish that. We're above all people on the face of the earth. Right? But we know that our people are at the bottom, right? We're going to get to that too. Watch this. This is 2nd Edges, chapter 6, and verse 54. Bring it out. And after thee, Adam also, whom thou made his Lord of all thy creatures. So we know everybody comes from Adam. You agree with the text? Everybody come from Adam and Eve. You agree with the text? Of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So, the Most High said we all come from Adam. You agree with the Most High or you think he a liar? You don't think he a liar? So you agree with the text? The Most High said we all come from him. Alright? Now watch this. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou made us the world for our sake. So this world, right? We're not talking about cosmos. 
when we talk about world, Neptune, Pluto, Mars, and all of that, all right? We're talking about a world of a nation of people, all right? Because if you ever been to China, you ever been to Russia, you ever been to Germany, all these people have their own languages, their own cultures, their own heritage, right? That makes them a world within their self, all right? So on this planet Earth, we got 18 worlds that exist. That is the embodiment of people, all right? So this world was created for the Israelites. That's right. Because that has made it the world for us. Verse 56. And for the other people, which also come from Adam. So we just read that all people come from Adam, but the Most High said, as for the other people, because he separated a group of them, right? So he had 18 people, he took one and told the 17 over there, all right? The other people. Let's see what he said about them. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. You know what spit is? Spittle. Spit. The Lord said everybody else except for the Israelites are spit. That's why he told you you are special people unto him. Right? right. And has likened them to the abundance, has likened the abundance of them unto a drunk that falleth from a vessel. And now, O oh Lord, behold these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing. So he said these other nations, these two crusty bastards right here has always had a re reputation of being nothing That's right. to him. That's right. It's not my words. I see your face looking. That was kind of harsh, right? And the Lord said that. That's right. I didn't say it. I'm just re reiterating what the Bible just said. God. He said they have always had a reputation of being nothing. Right. And now, oh Lord, behold these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us. Amos, Amos and Andy have begun to rule over us, right? Who run this earth? Uh, be honest, uh, who rules this whole world? Say it again, King. White people. White people. White people. Exactly. That's right. He said they have begun to rule over us. And they rule over us, right? God. Now look at Amos, chapter 3, verse 2. Look it up. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Most High is telling that chosen group of people that they're the only ones he knows out of all the families on the earth. Mm. You see that, kid? You. He only knows you. That's why our people struggle the way we do. Right? That's in Deuteronomy right. Uh, 1. In Deuteronomy chapter 1. Yeah. Right. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. You familiar with the story of Moses and Pharaoh? Let my people go. All right? So when Moses got uh, freed the Israelites out of, the, out, of Mo out of their Pharaoh's hand and they parted through the Red Sea, did he leave with everybody in Egypt or he just left with the Israelites? He just left with the Israelites, right? Let's read it again. Watch this. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this side, Jordan. So when they crossed that water, Moses had words to tell that group of people. In the wilderness, and the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tafel and Laban and Hazarah and Desahab. Now let's see what words he told them. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Bring it up. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. So Moses told that group of people that if they didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, that curses would come upon them. That's a curse, a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? And overtake you. They will pursue you, follow you wherever you go. 
You know people in your life that have trials and tribulations and they assume that if they pack up and move to another city, another state, everything could be good, right? But you get there and find yourself still having the same damn problems. There's no escape. Curse shall not be in the city. Every city on this planet where you got out people put, they live in the worst conditions you can think of, right? All the, all the drug dealing, all the shooting and killings, police harassment, raping, right? Child molestation, DCFS taking the kids. Now we think that's just coincidental circumstances flip of a coin. But you just found out that the Most High God said that that would be one of his curses that he would put on the children of Israel, his chosen people. Right? Because they, if they didn't keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? And curse shall not be in the field. In the field. Was our people not in the fields when they got over there? You know anything about our black history? They, they was in the cotton fields, right? Tobacco fields, right? Sugar cane fields, right? right? Even in these fields today. Last first fire, last hire, right? If you do work for them, they're nine out of ten. They trying to make you clean they damn toilet after they biting nasty ass disease walking around having. <laughs> Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Didn't they, Master Johnson, sell our children to other plantation owners, split up our families? He modernized it, and he's still doing it right now today. You know what it's called? DCFS, right? Department of Children and Family Services. Somebody make a complaint against the way you raising your child because the most I told you to train up your child in the way that you want them to go and when they get older they won't part from it. So that takes discipline, right? Bring it out. Bro. Disciplinary and actions has to be in, 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 in effect in order for your child to grow up right, right? But if you do that, they told your kids to call DCFS and then the white man comes in and do what? Take your children, right? And give them off to some homosexual family man who end up molesting on the kids. Making them worse than them being in that situation. But it's a curse. You just found out that that's a curse from the most high because the Israelites wouldn't keep the commandments. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and bear with longing for them all the day long. And it would be like you can do about it, right? They, our people was helping, just like we are today. Police come in your house, take whatever they want, take you to jail, and ain't nothing you can do about it. All right? Watch this. Then in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now we just talked about most leaving Egypt, right? With the Israelites. The Lord said he's going to take them back into Egypt. Right? Now from Jerusalem, our homeland to Egypt. That's like walking across that street right there. But the Lord said, they're gonna go into Egypt again with what? With ships on a ship. Do well, I need to take a ship to cross the street? So you gotta be talking about a similar to, right? A place that would be equivalent to what was going on in Egypt. What was the Israelites doing in Egypt? Do you know? They were slaves to the Egyptians, all right? All that. This is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord my God, which have brought me out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, bondage. What's another word for bondage? Slavery. The Lord said that he would he brought them out of slavery. We already established that, right? Now let's put Egypt over here. Let's put that bondage over here. Read it with bondage or read it with slavery. Oh, God. This is a cry, cry. And then you shall be sold unto your enemies. Read it all over. Read it all over. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Into slavery again. Right? Because he freed us the first time. You just read that, right? With ships. This time with ships. Did not our ancestors get on slave ships? And that's how they got over there? By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou, thou shalt see it no more again. Exactly what I told you I was going to do to you, I did it. And you wouldn't see your homeland, Jerusalem, ever again. 
They got Amalekites, fake Jewish people over there, right? You know what the, the suffix is mean? It means pertaining to. If you told me right now, brother Nadine, you acting childish, you're not calling me a child, I'm acting in a matter. They're called Jewish because they're acting like the Jews. It's the largest case of identity theft. They're inhabiting your land. That's right. Jerusalem is your homeland. That's where they enslaved us from the West Coast. They enslaved us from the West Coast banks of Africa and bought you here. Let's finish this real quick. And then you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. You will be sold to your enemy for bond men and bond women when you got off that slave ship. It's not our ancestors sold. They were sold, right? Who was they sold to? Who was our ancestors sold to when they got off the slave ship? White oh. people. Oh. Brother, you know you're an Israelite now, right? Once you come, you can't go back to calling yourself an African American. You can't call yourself black, all right? Hey, yo, hey, 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 one, hey, one second, brother. Hey, brother. Brother. One second, one second. Hey, yo, you give him that 10 12? You give him? No, no, no. We drop it. You gotta keep that one, 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 more, one more thing, King. Before you go. One more. It's a lucky, King, because I'm sure I ain't gonna stand back. Walk. We'll give you this fire, King. I'm gonna leave. I'll give you one more precept before you go. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Yeah. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God report for me? Now you know you're an Israelite. Alright? The most high got requirements here. You can't no longer walk around here in this worldly lifestyle, alright? You actually marked now. You're gonna be watched closely by the angels. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in His way, to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy joy. Now you gotta find out the mysteries of this Bible, all right? I gave you a little bit of history about how you, to prove who you are and how that you're an Israelite. Now you gotta get you a King James Bible, King. You see all these brothers out here and these sisters? We got old friends. We have a dress code. We have a dietary code, all right? To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. That's what you gotta do, all right, King? You gotta now start to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Stay in touch. Okay. Got that problem, brother. Good. Reach out to us, all right, King? So we can help build you up. Good. 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 This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of man. That's our whole duty, Israel. Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. Death to America. Death to America. Death to America. Death to the dead and the heathen. Death to the heathen nation. 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 Death to the who got next? We are next. Who got next? We are next. Who got next? We are next. Take the key. Take the key. Take the key. Take the key. Now. 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 Let's shoot my shot, yo, shot. 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 Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Hey, bro, you got no idea. Yeah, I got him. Yeah.